calling to order the meeting of uh, Board of Selectmen of Town of Arlington Monday, July 22nd, uh, 2013. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to open this uh, with a, um, for a moment of silence. Uh, town meeting member Nancy Sweeney, who's also a member of the Human Rights Commission and a longtime volunteer at the Jason Russell House, passed away last week. Uh, our thoughts are with her family and friends. Could we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Just a quick note about tonight's agenda. I'm gonna be moving one item up, uh, the memorandum of understanding. I'm gonna move up after the treasurer. And another th uh, element is just in case anyone was working from the original agenda, we issued an addendum today that has an additional borrowing on it. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna be covering that with the treasurer when we talk about his item. Okay, first up, consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting from June 17th. We have a whole series of reappointments. Uh, these generally get bundled into every six months at this point. Uh, these are reappointments that come from the town manager. Board of Health, Dr. Michael Fitzpatrick. Board of Youth Services, Ann Horgan. Cemetery Commission, Michelle Hassler. Conservation Commission, Curtis Connors, Nathaniel Stevens, Charles Tyrone. Constable, Richard Boyle. Disabilities Commission, D. Heidi Hampel. Human Rights Commission, Sherry Barron. Library to Trustees, Joyce Radosha, Open Space Committee, David White, Anne LaRoyer, Park and Recreation Commission, Leslie Mayer, Personnel Board, Richard Terry, Trust Fund Commission, Augusta Haydock, uh, uh, for the Trust Fund Commission, sorry, Vision 2020, Mary A. Harrison, all of those with terms to expire on June 30th, 2016. Sorry, Mr. Chair, yeah. also, also uh, William McCarthy for Cemetery Commission. I knew I missed something there, thank yeah. you. Thank you, William McCarthy under the Cemetery Commission, sorry about that. Under Park and Recreation Commission, James Robillard, term to expire 630-14. Donald Vitters and Jennifer Rothenberg, terms to expire 630-15. And those were all reappointments. And new appointments of new election workers, Barbara Gardner, Martin Caldwell, and David Fuller. Do I have a motion? I move approval. Second. Any discussion? Or is anyone of those people I just named here who wishes to speak or be? Yes, I saw someone move. Thank you for your service. Was that Mr. Stevens? Come on up and say hi. Take, take the praise for all of the committee members who do the, who do the town's work. <laughs> Thanks very much um, on the Conservation Commission. We appreciate the Board of Selectmen's uh, support and the town manager's support with all our issues. And least but not last, uh, Juliana Rice for helping us with any of the issues when we need support. So thanks very much. And the other commission members could not make it tonight, but they thank you as well. We are delighted for your service and thank you for coming up and accepting the, the reappointments of so many people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. thank Any you. other comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. I should also have mentioned uh, uh, Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Greeley are both out of town tonight. This meeting had originally been scheduled for last week and then um, I asked it to be moved and the, so that caused some schedule uh, collisions. Uh, they regret that they can't be here with us. Next up is item number two, appointment. This is a new appointment as opposed to the reappointments we just did uh, to the Redevelopment Board, Andrew G. Bunnell. Mr. Bunnell, yes. come on up to the microphone. Uh, you can tilt it up a little bit, it's very flexible. Tell us a couple sentences about you, why you're interested in this board. Thank sure. you, and of course, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm a four-year resident of Arlington looking to expand my involvement in the community. I'm an attorney, I have an office in Woburn, uh, practice in the area, I have some experience uh, before becoming a, a law, an attorney in uh, redevelopment, economic development, land use planning. And uh, when I saw that the position was open, it really piqued my interest and seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to really get involved with Arlington and help the town move forward, particularly with some of the things that are happening in town right now. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kira. Did I understand part of your uh, practice currently is property law? Or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Property and real estate development. Yep. No, thank you very much. Yeah, my only comment is, uh, welcome to the hot seat a little bit. Some of the, <laughs> you know, some of the board, that board handles some of the controversial issues that really shape what Arlington is going to be like. So, I understand. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all good. It's all good debate. <laughs> all right. Uh, any further comment or discussion? A motion? I, I move approval uh, of the of the uh, recommended appointment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Look forward to working with you. Thanks. All right, Mr. Gilligan, next up, requests for borrowing. 
We have request for to proceed for the capital projects, a vote to extend equipment, and the late agenda item to uh, the town manager uh, to accept grants and loans from the MWRA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I'm here to uh, uh, ask you uh, to allow the town to proceed to borrow uh, over $7 million. Uh, that $7 million is for capital projects authorized by the 2013 annual town meeting. It is for $1.2 million in sewer projects, $650,000 in water facility projects, and $2.4 million to permanently finance uh, the last phase of the construction of the Thompson School. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also asking the board to vote to ex extend the useful life of certain equipment, which was spelled out in the, in the memo that I forwarded to the board uh, last week. Uh, not all equipment within uh, these projects is being requested to have its useful life extended. Uh, the request is to allow for uh, the borrowing to be uh, more advantageous to the town and also allow us to have an extended coupon, which means we will not start to make a first payment until into the next fiscal year. It's advantageous to the town financially. Excellent. Uh, do you want to talk about all three or, or one at a time or how do you want to do it? Whichever, th whatever you prefer, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's go through all three. So we'll okay. So we've got uh, the capital projects, which is over $3 million. Those are sp spelled out in the uh, Excel, sp Excel spreadsheet that I forwarded to you, which were all voted by town meeting. Uh, the, again, the water project and the sewer project, I'll touch upon the water facilities main project. Uh, that is the emergency addendum item that also uh, you mentioned earlier. Uh, unbeknownst to the town at the writing of this memo, uh, the MWRA has included the town in a local water sewer assistance program project where we will receive an interest fee free loan of $550,000, which only leaves the town um, having to borrow $100,000 for that water project. If it was not on the agenda tonight, it would not have been able to be on the agenda until your August meeting, which then would have delayed the issuance of those water bonds for another 30 days into September, hence the request to have it discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and also part and parcel of that vote is uh, for your authorization for the town manager to act as agent for the town in authorizing that loan. Okay. Questions? We're gonna have to do three separate motions. But yep. yeah. questions sure. um, no. No, it's very straightforward. I think, thank you. Thank thank you. you. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I, I move to um, I make sure I've got the language right. I know I have to be very sp specific on this. Um, I move to, pr to proceed with borrowing as outlined in this uh, recommendation for the Town of Arlington to issue general obligation bonds, GO bonds, for capital projects totaling $3,575,350, school construction GO bonds totaling $2,443,750.04, permanently financing Current bond anticipation notes bans for Thompson School construction, general obligation bonds of $1,200,000 for construction of sewers, and $650,000 for construction of water facilities. <coughs> Is that correct? I'll second that. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Three zero. Mr. Chairman, you did that in one breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have a question for council, actually, as, as I make this next motion. Uh, do I need to read out all of these lines, or can I, um, can I reference it in the motion? Oh, oh, no, you can reference that. Okay, thank you. Because okay. I don't have that many breaths tonight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I move to, if it's all right. I, I move to uh, vote to extend the useful life of certain equipment within the borrowing as stipulated under GL uh, Chapter 44, Section 7, 9, and 7, 3A. Um, the recommended vote for useful life of equipment um, as provided by Bond Council being um, <coughs> enumerated in the memo provided to us by the Treasurer dated July 16, 2013. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three zero. All right, we're two for three. Last one. Well, I don't want me to just go. I'll, I'll grab it. Go um, for it. I'm not going to be as in depth as you are. I love that. Thank you. We can just. Or you can Mr. Gillen, did, is this the motion that would like? That's it. Perfect. Um, and, and, and the administrator to the board has the full vote. Yeah, excellent. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen authorize the town manager to 
act on behalf of the town as its agent in executing agreements and performing any and all actions necessary. Um, Second. In thank you, sounds good. In regard, and that's in regard to the- To the MWR, right? Yeah, excellent. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Treasurer, anything else? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just you. like, as I st stated in my memo, I will be appearing before the board in either late September or early October, uh, having proceeded with the bond sale, and we will time that in the best interest of the town with respect to a sale date. Okay. And I thank the board. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, one item to be taken up. We are going to take item number 13 for approval, draft memorandum of understanding Battle Road Scenic Byway. Ms. Rowe and Ms. Oluski. Um, <clears throat> hello, thank you. This is Clarissa Rowe and Angela Oluski. Sorry. Yes. Um, and I just, um, there, is a, there was a four page memorandum in your packet. Um, both the town manager and the town council have reviewed it. It's between the town of Arl towns of Arlington, Lexington, Lincoln, and Concord. It's setting up a management structure for the scenic byway, um, the Battle Road scenic byway. Um, I think the things that would concern you the most are what kinds of powers you're giving away. There are no powers being given away. The, any money request would have to come back to the board of selectmen. The way I read this, and um, obviously Adam and Juliana can talk about it, the ultimate power really resides in the four select boards. But it is a way of, of setting a program for the management of the scenic byway. Um, the four towns are members. The National Park is a member. Um, and the membership is spelled out. I think it's pretty self-evident, pretty flexible, um, and not too rigid. Anything to add to that? Question. Um, reading through this, I think this is very straightforward. I think it's very exciting that we're finally, I know this has been on hold for a while, you know, pending the availability of some funds to push forward the, the um, Battle World Scenic um, uh, Byway uh, project. And I'm, I'm very excited. I know we have the right people also representing the town. Um, in this, uh, so I will move to um, approve the MOU, um, pointing out the need for one small clerical change in um, on the first page under uh, Roman numeral one, number two, the first line. The, the spelling of funds at the end of the line uh, seems to yes have dropped a letter. Funds, we need funds. Well, I thought they were uh, dispersing funds. Would love fun. Would <laughs> love to disperse fun, but uh, <laughs> we're dispersing great. funds. So I, I will so move. Yeah, I'll second, and I'm excited about this as well. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I think about like w my early days in town meeting and how we were talking about it, like how you know Lexington and Concord everyone talks about them and you know we need to make sure that Arlington gets involved and so on and so forth and this feels to me like you know it's been years of work but this feels to me like some of the articulation of that progress and I think it's really exciting I think this is this is going to I believe that this is going to be an organization that's going to help you know ATED and others really drive a lot of economic development for the town I'm very excited about it too Thank you very can, much. Can I make one other point, yeah, please. Mr. Chair? Uh, one thing I'm excited about in this is that it's always struck me that as we try to compete with our neighboring communities, that the presence of the National Park Service there gives them a great advantage uh, compared to us. I'm glad that we are now in an agreement like this where we do have some kind of a formal relationship with, with the, the, the Park Service and the, and the National um, historic sites. So. Yeah. And one of the things I actually asked um, the <clears throat> representative from the National Park Service about was trying when the maps are republished, and of course they're just about to be re republished this fall, um, but in the next publication to include Arlington in the map, and I think that would help tremendously. And he promised me before, but I think this time he'll keep his promise. Excellent. Excellent. Further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. All right. Next item on the agenda, our public hearing scheduled for 7.15. It being after 7.15, we can start the public hearing. And these are discussion of the alcohol compliance report. Uh, so I am going to invite our detective to run. So we have six uh, restaurant or licensees that we um, are going to discuss. 
I'm going to invite the detective to talk about the process and procedure and uh, the events related to all six. Um, and then we're going to go forward and hear each one of the, uh, go through each one of the six licensees one by one um, as listed in the order of the agenda, barring anything unexpected. Uh, it's also worth noting that the board has previously adopted a set of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, guidelines. The guidelines, thank you. So we have a, we have a template of uh, response. It, it, we, first, we are going to be doing essentially finding a fact to see if we think the reports are accurate. And if we think that there is a violation, then we can follow those guidelines. But the guidelines do give us flexibility if we think that uh, per, uh, a given violation was particularly um, strong, you know, egregious or minor. So uh, I guess with that, I'm gonna, if you could introduce yourself and sure. talk to us and walk us through all six, the process, the procedure, so on and so forth. Okay, good evening. My, uh, my name is Gregory Foley. I'm an inspector with the Arlington Police Department. Um, on Tuesday and Thursday, June 11th and 13th, um, the Arlington Police Department conducted alcohol compliance checks on um, various restaurants and liquor stores in the town. Um, we utilized two underage operatives um, prior to going out on the street and checking the businesses for their compliance. Uh, we take all their personal property, I secure it in an uh, evidence envelope, I keep it at the station. They have no cash or anything in their pockets. All the cash that's used during the compliance checks are provided by me. Um, Prior to going out, we also take the underage operatives to our booking room and we give them a breathalyzer. Prior to going out on both nights, they both operatives scored 0.00, .00 which is no alcohol at all. Um, and at the end of both nights, we do it as well. And on the end of both nights, they both came back 0.00. .00. So there was no alcohol consumed during these checks. Um, they signed off on the Town of Arlington guidelines the Town of Arlington release forms prior to going out, and we went over the um, Commonwealth of Mass Compliance Guidelines through the ABCC, the Alcohol Beverages Control Commission, where they understood what their role was um, in, the, in the operation. Um, we, like I said, we used two underage operatives. We took photos of what they were wearing prior to going out on both nights. Um, I also conducted the checks last year in 2012 as well. Thank you. Uh, can you, and then just so uh, you went through essentially half of the checks on one night and then half of them on another? Yes, just to uh, kind of break it up a little bit, not get overwhelmed doing all the establishments in one night. Yeah. On Tuesday the 11th, we did 17 checks. And on Thursday the 13th, we did 19 checks. On the first night, Tuesday the 11th, we had two violations. And on Thursday, the uh, we, during the 19 checks, we had four violations. Mr. Mr. Carroll? And just to elucidate on that, that, that point, just so everyone here and at home is clear, checks were performed on every single liquor store and um, other restaurant which serves alcohol in the town of Arlington. Cor well, the, correct. There was two places in town, uh, La Posada up in the Heights, they, it's bring your own alcohol right. which we don't we're not going to supply the Certainly. the kids to go in the restaurant and the other one was the Arlington Diner which had changed their hours for the summer and they closed at three in the afternoon so both nights we went out we left at four okay um, but there's been no violations there uh, prior to 3 p.m. Um, as far as I know but but they should they should be aware that that they're subject to a check right. just like any other because this could happen in you know on a different day next year when they'd be open for business. Uh, and just to, so the uh, people at home and in the audience know what we have in front of us. So we have the report, um, from the, like the written report from Inspector Foley, and it describes in the cases of the ones that where there was, you know, it says no sale, ask for ID, no sale, ask for ID for most of them. But then for some of them, you get a description, like the two operatives sat at the table closest to the Coke refrigerator and ordered two bottles of Bud Light. The waiter brought two bottles along and so on and so forth. So we've got a written description of what the operative saw as reported by Inspector Foley. And so that's part of what we're looking at and talking about when we talk to these uh, licensees. Yeah. 
Okay. Any other co questions or comments? No. All right. Uh, if you could stick with us and see if we have any future cool. uh, questions as we go along. Uh, first up is Mana House from 9A Medford Street. And it should be noted this is uh, you were this is the second offense. You came before us last year, and we found we found that you had violated the policy. Uh, can you talk? What could you talk to us about this report? Um, I'm, I'm Ola. I'm translating on my daughter. Um, I will translate for him. Okay, thank you. And I, could you give both of your names? Just I'm yep. sorry if I didn't. My name is Ina Choi. Uh, my name is uh, Songjo Choi. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I do remember exactly what happened that night. Um, there were two people. It was a man and a woman. They came in and um, they sat down and we gave the menu and they were looking at what to eat and I heard them what they wanted. Um, so while that was happening, I was taking care of another table and then when I came back, uh, they just wanted beer. So I said, you know, we can't just give beer. It's a restaurant. You need to order at least, you know, something. Uh, so they were like, okay, well, can you give us like another minute? And I said, okay. So then I came back and they just wanted miso soup. So at that point I was like, okay, well, I guess that's fine. So I gave them miso soup. But while I was doing that, um, like I gave them the beer first, I opened it for them. But then uh, when I went to the kitchen to the miso soup, at that point, I just remembered that I was supposed to check their IDs. Um, the owner did remind me too, did you check their IDs? And um, I was like, oh, I forgot. I should go check. And then, um, but at that point, um, the other waitress uh, already gave them the check and they already paid and they just left. So yeah, and then um, at that point I pretty much expected that I would come here uh, because he has been warning me about this and um, but other days I did not forget. It was just that one time I forgot. Um, yeah. Questions or comments at the start? Um, yeah. When um, so after you came last year, we... Oh, it wasn't me I came last year. It was my sister. Your sister, but yeah. after... Uh, Actually, I'm sorry. Your establishment was here last year. Yeah, as a restaurant. Oh, yeah, as a restaurant, yes. Um, you, we handed out a penalty of, what, I believe, two days? It was three. Three days yeah. mm -hmm. of um, yes. not serving alcohol. What type of impact did that have on your restaurant? And do, you know, do you think that that didn't, I guess that punishment didn't, you know, prepare you guys well enough to make sure it wouldn't come here again? To no, get it definitely point? did prepare. Um, it actually, you know, losing that three days, um, you know, caused us to, one, lose money, and uh, that really affected, you know, the owner. And, yeah, I got in deep trouble right after from the owner. Uh, so right after, I always checked. Um, so it was just that time I just forgot, sort of split second. Thank you. Carol. What specific measures were taken after last year to, um, to ensure that employees, I mean, how many employees are there at the establishment who, who um, would be um, serving? Just two. Two? Mm -hmm. And what specific measures were taken to um, you know, ensure that the compliance checks were, that the people didn't forget? Um, the owner would always tell me, or the other waitress. I'm sorry, I didn't follow that. The owner would tell me, like remind me, yeah, every day. Well, not every day, but only when I work. I work Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday nights. So, yeah. If he knows I'm taking out alcohol, he'll say, uh, did you make sure you checked? And then I always check right after, or right before I give it to them. I go back out, and then I say, oh, may I check your ID, please? And then they always give it out. So, Mr. Chair, how, how are you proposing to proceed this evening? Would, would you like to, are we going to hear from all violations? I was all thinking violations we'd handle them as we go. As we go? Yeah. Whatever I have some comments from before, if you want to hold off making a motion. That's fine. Yeah. That's just, Mr. Chair. I was yeah. thinking that we should take, unless there's a specific reason, I, I'd be inclined to handle each one as we go. Okay. I, I agree. I think they're all individual circumstances. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, from what I hear, what I hear is we've got two checks and two failures. We've got a failure that we came here, we talked about processes and implementation to make it such that we wouldn't have a failure again. Clearly, whatever processes we, we talked about and did not work. Uh, what changes will you make to make sure that there isn't a strike three? 
약간 무슨 체인지 이제부터 무슨 체인지 할 거야 이제 스트레이트 안 받게 Yeah, like no matter the age, I'm yeah, always going to check. Mm. It's the law. I'm not going to forget this time. Um, so I guess I'm not satisfied with that because people come, people go. Yeah. It's not one person forgetting. It's not one person remembering. You've got, like, you've got a systematic problem here. Yeah. It isn't just a single person. Like, uh, I guess one of the things that, you, that you know, if I'm an engineer and engineering backgrounds you talk about, you don't have, you, you can't, you can't plan for the next time someone being smarter. Mm -hmm. We don't get smarter. We have to. Yeah. We have to build a system around that. Yeah. I, I'm. I mean, I'm, frankly, I'm unconvinced that you can. That you know how to stop this from happening again. I need to hear that you can adopt a process that's going to change. That's going to make a different result. Well, I mean, it's common sense that I have to check it. It's the rule. So. And yet we're over two. Yeah. Common sense is not prevailing. Yeah. Um, so, so you were here for our last hearing. Uh, you heard the steps that a number of the other restaurants were taking to avoid repeats. They include things like documentation, training, checklists, signage. There's a whole bunch of things like that. Have you adopted any of those? Last year, I uh, had the hearing. I said that the get done restaurant to the most strike is it there can I didn't know and yeah he did it all for could you elucidate um for the most part I remember he would always just tell me uh, or not when I'm working, but during break time, like right before I work, he would say, can you please make sure you check your IDs uh, that, that, so that we don't have to get in trouble. And All right, I'm going to ask my question again then. What are you going to do differently to prevent this from happening again? Because um, just so you're, we're clear, yeah. I will not vote for you to have a license if you're going to do if unless you promise changes. There, you clearly aren't. Yeah. The process you're using is not acceptable. You have to come up with a new one. And if you don't commit to a new one, I'm going to personally be supporting yeah. revoking your license. Yeah. Because we're not really sure exactly what we can do. Um, because I know that forgetting is not, you know, like intentional either, but what do you suggest that we could do? Because I don't know. Mr. Kira? Is your staff tips trained? Sorry? Is your staff tips trained? Yeah. So the training should have given you some some guidance Background, around yeah. around what to do. I mean, I, yeah. I think perhaps one suggestion might be to take the training yeah. again. I mean, it's but just, I, I do have a question for you. I mean, yeah. do, what is your pol did you set any policies and any expectations with your with your customers um, after the last time? I mean, what is the expectation? Yeah. Is the expectation yeah. that you will be carded if you appear to be underage? It, so ever since that time, um, the thing I got annoyed was um, like when I would check their IDs, uh, they would find it kind of ridiculous, even though it's a rule and. Um, it's a small restaurant, so I don't know if that's why either, but um, I would explain to them, like, you know, this, we, you know, we got a penalty, like, a few months ago, and we don't want that again, so we need to check the IDs. It's not because, like, you know, you know, you're over 80, and I don't believe you. It's because it's the rule, and I have to do that because I don't want to get in trouble. But, and I would check it every day. It was just that one night, yeah, just... For a split second, I just forgot. Okay, so could I Ms. continue Kira. this question? I, I want to believe it's just one night, but we have no way of establishing that. It's a big coincidence when we just do the checks once once a year that that that, that would happen. I, I tend to be on the same page with with 
Mr. Dunn um, on, on, on this. Our guidelines say that as a guideline, yeah. as, a, as a guideline for a first offense, the guideline is to suspend the license for three to five nights. For a second offense, six to ten nights. We always have the, the option, though, to revoke the license. Within that, we have discretion, and we're going to have to make that decision tonight. The way I think about this is I take this extremely seriously, and I, yeah. and I think starting from the, from the harshest penalty and then work back. And if somebody didn't show at all, I, I'd say forget it. That's a lost cause. If somebody shows but is not able to demonstrate a, a real um, clear plan, as Mr. Dunn stated, that also, for me, is a strike against them. Things that are that help, and we've seen this, and we will see this in some of the other hearings, are when um, licensees provide us with plans. A couple of licensees proactively provided us with plans and, and procedures for how to avoid this. Mm -hmm. Other things that I'll be taking into consideration tonight for you and for the other licensees, so if anyone else is, is listening, um, is whether or not there are repeat violations in successive years. This is a real problem, yeah. that there are repeat violations in successive um, uh, years. Um, and I think we, we have now a number of repeat violations tonight. Regardless of what we do with your license and the, and the others, three strikes definitely is out for, for me. And two, maybe. If, if I'm not convinced that there's a proactive um, plan to, to address this. Um, yeah, going <clears throat> off of that, that plan, I think that, you know, what I would do if I was in your shoes would probably be have a card everyone policy moving forward. Um, you know, I know other restaurants, I believe, put up signs to, you know, instruct their employees on yeah. how to kind of go about this and and I do agree with my colleagues that we're not really you know you, you're not explaining explaining that process to us and it does give you know it does make me a little hesitant to you know on how to move forward in this circumstance but you know just saying that you know you're you're not going to forget is you know that that's not 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 what I'm looking for at least and I don't think that's what anyone else up here is working for, looking for either um, I don't know if you want motions yet but I've got a I've got a thought for a motion mm -hmm. that perhaps one of you might want to make that I okay. and, and that is so the way uh, the town council has asked us the, to work is whatever motions we, in the memo that she provided us is one of the uh, is that whatever uh, decisions we make would kick in after our fall our next meeting uh, so that she has time to write up the formal r mm -hmm. results of, of these hearings. Mm -hmm. And I would be interested in supporting a motion that is something that is hefty, uh, 10 days or six or whatever, and it, but is actually um, indefinite until we receive a written plan for mitigation of prevention. And I'm sure that our offices, Marie and Marianne, will be able to help them put together, you know, show examples that we've received from other ta uh, from other things. And the answer, and if the so you're saying back, no less than ten days, I'm saying no less than ten days and indefinite until we get a plan that we, as a board, are approve. So that gives them the option of they come back with a plan and we approve it on August 19th, which is our next scheduled meeting then that would be the suspension where we vote. If they fail to come back with a plan that is satisfactory, then that suspension is indefinite. I think we'd be on solid legal ground on that. Is that correct, Ms. Rice? Um, yeah, I, I just, um, I guess, would want to uh, have a better understanding about indefinite. Would it be indefinite until such time as they provided a plan in the future? Until we approve one. Uh, and, exactly. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. And, and do you want 10 consecutive days? Yeah. I think that's what we, I think we kind yeah. of have to do it. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's my suggestion. And I think that's a fine suggestion. So I move, want me to try to frame it. I, I move. I move to um, suspend the um, the restaurant liquor license for Manor House for uh, ten consecutive days. Starting on, and I know the recommendation was the same day of the week, mm -hmm. so to... Um, they were a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes, to, to commence on a Thursday um, and to keep the said suspension in effect until such time 
as the licensee is able to produce a, a plan that meets with the board's a, a plan, a mitigation plan that will meet with the board's approval. Do, you know, do we have to give a specific date in that motion that this will start, or just the Thursday? Uh, well, I, th I think what we were saying is that this would be following well, the. It put, yeah, but it, let's say we should let's put a date like that would be the the start. What is the start of the suspension? The twenty third. Would that be nineteen? Uh, if we say Thursday, it would be Thursday the twenty second. Thursday the tw August twenty second, August 29th, September fifth are the Thursdays. September fifth. That way, 5th. that way, it gives it gives the licensee an opportunity to come in in, in August okay. and and that and cap up. it. I'll yeah. second that. Uh, any comment, Ms. Rice? So, do you understand what we're proposing? Um, so, you're giving us. So, you, we're not going to sell alcohol over 10 So, we are suspending your license for 10 days, 10 days. to so, starting September 5th. Okay. And that suspension is more than 10 days, it is indefinite until we receive a written policy that you adopt that, we, that meets our approval. Yeah. So you have to get us something, which presumably if you get, give it to us, our next meeting is August 19th. Mm -hmm. The deadline for you to, to get on our agenda for August 19th is the previous Thursday. Okay. If you get us something by that Thursday, we'll consider it on August 19th. And if okay. we approve it, then you have a 10-day suspension. If we fail to approve it, your suspension starts on September 5th and it continues until we approve the plan. Okay. There's a lot of good samples from some of the other restaurants in town. And uh, there's a lot of process stuff that you can do putting signage on the liquor cabinet, having employee trainings, having re refresher courses, redoing tips trainings. Um, okay. You can see we're pretty skeptical. You know, yeah. I forgot a split second. You know, you're 0 for 2. That's like we've only checked twice. You haven't gotten it right once. I'm pretty skeptical. So I, I might make a suggestion that, uh, although I know it's probably somewhat uncomfortable, you might want to stay and, and listen to some of the other the other licensees and see if there are some ideas that okay. they're bringing forth that you could yeah. adopt also. Good idea. Okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion from Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Next up, not your average Joe's, 645 Massachusetts Avenue, first offense. And I guess I should have said at the previous one uh, uh, that our First offense, our recommended two is three, three to five. five. Three to five, thank you. And our second offense, our recommended is six to ten. So we just handed out a punishment that is on the heavy end of the second offense. Gentlemen, could you introduce yourselves and talk to us? My name is Steve Silverstein. I'm the founder and CEO of Not Your Average Joe's. With me is Joe Gottlin, Senior Vice President of Operations, and John Forbush, who is the General Manager of the Arlington Restaurant. Thank you. I saw that you dropped off this envelope, but unfortunately it was too late. I reviewed it just a minute before the meeting, but I haven't seen, I haven't read it closely. I, I can walk you through that. All right. Um, listen carefully to the uh, previous uh, hearing. Uh, we uh, regret and embarrass that we're here. We've been in Arlington for 12 years. I've served over a million and a half people. I'm not sure how many previous things uh, were conducted in our operation, uh, but this is our, our, our first offense. Uh, it's unfortunate. We, Joe will explain to you the process that we went through. Uh, Joe actually said, well, why don't we offer to help? And I said, yeah, but we're here too. So um, we admit uh, clearly uh, the, uh, the case is written up uh, by the inspector. Uh, we had a young lady who was trained, and I think you'll hear about an extensive process uh, that we go through. And I'd say beyond that, we've served <coughs> over 25 million people in the state of Massachusetts, and we've never had um, a... Um, a meaningful, whatever the, exactly that means, liquor uh, issue in the state of Massachusetts. Um, so uh, we had a young lady uh, who was trained, who signed that she was trained, um, but she didn't follow the policy. So maybe if you uh, would like me to, I'll ask Joe to take you through our process. Thank you. Please do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board, in what you have in front of you, and I'll just walk you through it quickly, uh, on the green tabs, uh, the first tab will be our uh, policy book, our Book of Joe, as we call it. And the tab that's highlighted there uh, specifically states our policy as it relates to alcohol service. And if you look at that, it, it specifically uh, uh, goes to the point of carding uh, potential underage uh, guests. We set a policy and we set our bar, I, we felt, uh, at a reasonable place where if anyone looks 35 years 
or younger, uh, we uh, require our staff to card that person. And, and I can tell you, uh, we receive a fair amount of email complaints uh, from guests who have been uh, over the age of 21 but did not have uh, their proper identification and we refused alcohol service and they took exception, but uh, we, we don't uh, sway on, on our position there. Um, the second tab uh, gives you uh, a signed document that will require every new employee at their orientation and training to sign off that they acknowledge the policy uh, and specifically rewrite the policy again for them stating that uh, they are required to card anyone 35 years who appears to be 35 years uh, or younger and sign that document understanding and it's also written uh, in that document that failure to do so will result in immediate termination of their employment. Something by the way we take to heart um, providing job opportunities for people throughout this community for example and to terminate someone we don't take lightly but we believe this kind of violation is serious enough that will require that immediate action. The, set, the third tab uh, is their uh, acknowledgement that they read the Book of Joe and accept all the findings there. So it's another second document that we require their signature to further make the point that I understand our policies and procedures. Uh, the fourth tab shows you in our training materials how this subject is covered and not only do we discuss the carding process but uh, also the topic of uh, 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 over-serving or looking for behavior on guests who might come in who have been drinking elsewhere and uh, uh, the responsible uh, policies and procedures that go along with that. And then the final tab uh, is our final exam that we require for any employee, server or bartender to be allowed onto the floor. Uh, it's a 50 question quiz, I believe, and it shows in the tab that one of the questions <clears throat> is to write out the policy specifically at rates to, to carding, uh, all of which this employee who uh, had this violation completed. Uh, on top of that, we've submitted to you the signed documentations uh, of these policies from the employee in question. And furthermore, we showed documentation whereby once we looked into this, once we were notified uh, by the board at what happened, uh, we did in fact terminate the employee uh, immediately. There's one other page there on the back that shows a list of 25 employees. Those are all of our employees in Arlington who are responsible for serving alcohol either as servers or bartenders. Our liquor license in the town of Arlington does not require us to have all employees serve, say, certified. Some other towns do. Uh, they do require our management team to be serve, say, certified, all of which are, and we have documentation to support it. When we were notified uh, of what happened, uh, it was a wake-up call, and as Steve said, and someone who's responsible for operations, certainly um, disappointed and embarrassed that we are even having to be here, we immediately took steps to have every single employee in, in our Arlington restaurant serve, say, certified. Uh, they have completed that certification. I believe there's two additional employees that were on vacation that were required to complete it before they come back on the floor. And furthermore, Stephen has gone so far as to mandate that not only in Arlington, but in every one of our 18 restaurants, we will require all employees to be surf state certified uh, as a requirement of employment. Uh, we take this very seriously. Uh, as Steve said, we've been in business in this town for over 12 years. We take pride in what we do and the jobs we provide, but when it comes to alcohol serving, we understand how serious this is and how important it is. And I'd just like to introduce uh, John Forbush, our general manager, if you had any questions for him. Cool. Thank you. Do you have anything you wanted to add? I uh, just wanted to mention that, you know, I have been with Not Your Average Joe's for over 12 years, um, hired hundreds of employees, uh, have never had an issue with this in the past. I go through the same orientation with every single employee that's brought into any one of our locations. And, um, you know, I haven't had an issue up till this, this past June, so. And I do have the, uh, that additional list, if you don't have it in your packets there, of all the uh, certifications. Thank you. Questions from the board? This is extensive. Yeah. I have um, well, I, I definitely appreciate the professional manner that you're dealing with this and the, um, the steps that that you've taken to ensure this won't happen again. 
Um, I think you heard before that that's you know something we're pretty keen on, and uh, you know it's for the safety of our town, and of course you understand that. Um, so, I, I you know last time we did you know for a first offense would suspend the license for three days, and I, I would be comfortable moving forward to that um, after I hear my colleagues' discussion. Um, so that's. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I will, I'll support that motion when you make it. Um, <laughs> uh, so I appreciate you coming forward. I appreciate you taking responsibility, and um, you guys have done what we would what we really ask for in a situation like this. I mean, because uh, we don't we don't want the mistakes to happen, but at the same time, when they do happen, to figure out what changes you're going to make to keep them from repeating is obviously the key to to future success. And uh, I really, I, I, I do support still that, that we enforce our policy. I think that we should, we should give you a suspension, and I will support that. But at the same time, I think that you're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident with the steps you're taking. We won't have to worry about round two, right? And uh, I will also, you know, be supporting. I'll be supporting Steve's uh, motion. I, I do think the steps that you've taken go, you know, above and beyond, and and well. Um, but I think just as, just as you take this seriously and feel that you have to have a no-tolerance policy in, in, in your own enforcement and internally, I think that we also, just for consistency's sake, also have to have a um, um, be consistent with our policies as well uh, as we go forward. Okay. So that is the, the, in, the lowest end of our, of our guideline. Uh, and I appreciate that. Obviously, I would like to challenge that. Yeah. Um, but um, if... Um, I, I understand you, your basis for that. I can't. Uh, I'm sure there are other good operators. Um, it sounds like the the past uh, violators received three days. Um, it just seems uh, a million and a half people later, uh, you're going to affect 25 people's uh, paychecks. I think we have an outstanding record. Uh, I can't imagine um, with the documentation what we could have done differently. You have a young lady. Who chose we don't escort them to their tables uh, one thing is we operate in Virginia Maryland uh, is that they have fines for the employees also uh, and I'm sitting here saying God I hope this never happens again um, uh, but it might be something you want to consider uh, is to put some skin in the game for the employee who not only was terminated uh, but has a monetary fine uh, because I I can see a scenario uh, unfortunately despite all these efforts I don't know what else we could have done better, to be honest with you, uh, where we could find ourselves in a situation. And we're the ones that are penalized, yeah. yet it wasn't, we did everything that I think would be reasonably expected of us. That's an interesting question. Ms. Rice, uh, do you know, does state law permit our rules to, you know, put to administer punishment to the server as well, or are we constrained? Well, the way the, way the Massachusetts law is written is purely in terms of the licensee yeah. and actions that can be taken against the license itself <clears throat> rather than individual fines. Um, under Massachusetts law, as it currently stands, this board doesn't actually even have the authority to administer fines to the licensee. Okay. Only the ABCC can do that. So. Oh. Okay. So you, you understand is that we've taken all these steps. I, I honestly, I guess I would challenge, not at this moment, we have other, you have other business to conduct tonight, what we could have done differently. Yeah. Mm. No, I am um, going back to that point about, you know, charge, you know, potentially financially charging an employee. I think of it more as, you know, a team atmosphere. You know, I, while, you know, you do institute all these steps, which I, I think are fabulous, you know, looking at it, from you know the outside looking in, or from my perspective, is that you know we're not looking at this one you know individual. We're looking at you know the team as a whole and the whole operation. Um, but Mr. Garrett, I I do agree that, that that this establishment though has gone above and beyond, yeah. and I I would be willing to entertain the three day suspension being non consecutive nights, three Tuesdays. Cons three consecutive Tuesdays. I wasn't quite willing to go that far, but I was thinking um, let, let them choose the three day, the three consecutive days of their choosing. Yeah. Um, no. I, I I think that we have a policy in place that we've you know kept intact and while so we have changed the start date in the past. But but we've also you know we've had the last 
but at the last time we were handing out these punishments, we did, you know, people did come to us with yeah. steps as well, and, and we didn't seem ready to. Yeah, I guess I would say that this has been, of all the th times, that, you know, mm -hmm. all the people we've talked to so far, this has been the most convincing. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so, I'm, yeah. One of you two gets to make a motion. It, it would, it, it would, uh, you know, obviously, as Steve stated, it, we would have loved to not have any suspension, yes. but I also understand your point of view. To be able to choose the dates would be helpful. Uh, as you might have seen, we've made a sizable investment in our Arlington restaurant, all new uh, If any of you have been in there, the Let's entire start. interior start, is being redone. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited to roll out this new prototype to the town of Arlington. Um, there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. We're changing our uniforms. The, it's just a lot of nice things going on, and so the timing of this could be detrimental to the business uh, and to the employees. And I guess having some control over when that happens could be helpful. I, I'm, and maybe I won't get a second, but I, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I would move to um, suspend not your average Joe's license for three days in the month of September to be designated by the licensee, provided that the licensee informs the, the selectman's office of the chosen dates um, uh, by August 15th. I'll, uh, I will second that uh, semi-begrudgingly, but I'm... <laughs> it's, it's, probably the, it's probably where we are. Yeah. Okay. Um, any comments before we take that vote? Um, I mean, you don't have to. I'm just if you, there was a no, last, there was we, a last we understand you your perspective. Okay. I think you understand my perspective, yeah. and I th and I appreciate your willingness to to dialogue it. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Any further discussion? No. no. Ms. Rice, any comments? I don't recommend it, but it is within the board's purview to take this action if it chooses. Any particular, just because it's a violation, it's a deviation from our recommendation or from our guidelines, or is there anything else? Um, my recommendation is always that the suspension run consecutively, starting on the day of the week on which the violation occurred. Okay. I'm. I'm personally prepared to run afoul of Ms. Rice's guidance on this on this one. Yeah, I think I, I am too. Okay. Further discussion? I'm sorry. <laughs> All those in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Just double checking. <laughs> Three zero. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank my you. Last, we will not be here again for this. Good. <laughs> thank you. I will wave it back at your place, though. <laughs> so. All right. Next up, Sabzi, uh, 352A Massachusetts Avenue, second offense. Hi, uh, introduce yourself, please. Uh, Mayor on Kostrodat. I own Sabzi. Um, I'm disgusted, embarrassed, disappointed to be in front of you again, obviously. Um, since the last time I was here, you know, try to do the checklist. I took uh, the suggestion of one of the board members that we ID everyone. It's signed up. Um, the hirees, uh, Jose, the gentleman, uh, was TIP certified, uh, SurfSafe certified. Um, He's not with us anymore um, at the restaurant. Um, every precaution, I mean, now since then, again, you know, what I can do next is, you know, I put signage on the cooler where they pour the wine. I put a monitor in the kitchen so I can watch them and be careful. Uh, just hired a new guy. I had my wife go in secretly, order a drink. Thank God, you know, just whatever I can do, even like I don't have to wait a year or whenever the sting operations are, I'm going to do my own. <laughs> uh, make sure that they follow it. Um, again, it's, but it is my responsibility and what they, you know, what the staff does. Uh, any suggestions or any things? I mean, we have a guideline that, you know, when they hire, they sign off on it. Uh, it's brought up. I mean, we don't have meetings every day. It's a small restaurant. We have, you know, three staff. I mean, I see them every day. Uh, but I mean, I make a memo now in my cell phone to just beep to remind them again, check ID, don't risk it. I mean, um, I mean, but then at the end, it's a human nature and you, 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 you wish that people, uh, you count on their good judgment and that they follow up on it. And my job is to help them and make it easy for them and 
and that's it. I mean, I really feel terrible to be here. I, it's, I know it looks terrible. We've been open two years and twice. I know your faces. It's terrible. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, huh. But I'm in it in the long run, with a license or without. We live in Arlington, married in Arlington, put too much money into a little place, and whatever it takes, I'm going to move forward. Now, can I guarantee you 100% I'll never see you again? I'll be lying if I say yes, but I can guarantee you 110% I will do my best, whatever I can, whatever, whatever I can do to not be here, that's in my control, absolutely. I just want to note that before the meeting, you in fact, last week, you provided us with some documentation. Yeah, right away. I just did that. Made. Just, I mean, yeah. and then I think at night, what else can I do so it's not repetitive? I, you know, I'm going to change the paper on the cooler so it's not always the same color. It's green, and then it's blue, and then it's yellow. So, uh, so yeah. it shows up on it. I particularly like this one, which is on the front of the fridge. Yeah. You've got something that reminds people at the moment. Yeah, before they pull it out, it's like, hey, go back and just check again. It's... You know, it's, I mean, they're kids and, you know, for them it's just a job. You'd be lucky if they stay six months, a year. Um, but whatever I can do to let them know that, you know, <laughs> they're doing me a favor to do their job right. Mm. Mr. Kira. And what is, what is your standard for ID D checks? What, what's the well, expectation the, you the set up? The standard is customers? just to take the guessing work out of it, ID everyone. Yeah. No, I mean, if they get insulted, that's the customer we don't even want. If they don't get it, it's because that customer, if they're old and they have a kid, I think they would appreciate it if they go to an establishment yeah. and, you know, their ID is checked. Um, the funny part is the waitress that's still with us, Bahar, who was the <laughs> waitress last time, she, she almost checked, you know, she checked a couple that was way older. Uh, and the guy was a little bit upset, and he pulled up his wallet, and he was a cop. He showed his badge, but she was like, I'm sorry, <laughs> your wife. <laughs> but that's what you want. But uh, th on that day, I know it seems terrible because it's two times, and we did that. Uh, Jose, TIP certified, Cersei, mental lapse, and here we are. <laughs> but it's my job to, next time he opens the fridge or he's about to do something, help him out. Help me out. I'll put a monitor in the kitchen so I can see it. So if I can see somebody at a table and, you know, doesn't check ID, at least I can, you know, ring the bell. Hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um. Mr. Kara. My inclination on, on this one is um, to do a straight 10-day um, sus suspension, but, but to um, accept the measures that have been, been presented to us um, as, a, as a good faith effort to... Uh, um, <clears throat> prevent uh, recurrences. I did appreciate that they were provided to us ahead of time so that we had a chance to, right. to, to review them. Um, <clears throat> I note that there is a log in here um, of when um, employees uh, re received the, the alcohol training and um, guidelines. We do have uh, examples of the, the uh, <clears throat> signed policies and uh, pictures as well of the um, signage that is around the uh, restaurant to provide to um, remind staff as well as a a full-size blow up here we ID everyone which is really goes to the heart of the question I've been asking the other licensees what's the expectation that's set up with um, with customers right and I think especially you know we heard with the last licensee that they have confidence that, and they have demonstrated that, that they are able to use some kind of discretion. But I think that with a second violation, I, I think it is important to, to take, as you say, take the guesswork out of it. Um, so I appreciate that. I'm, I'm willing to accept this as a good faith effort and, and not have an indefinite suspension after the, after the 10 days. But, but uh, to, it is a second violation two years in a row. And, and um, I think we, we do take this seriously. Uh, I'd lean more towards six myself, but, which I think so. Um, I think that means that you get to call the shots. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, I, I was thinking, I, I think that eight might be appropriate if we came and met in the middle. I'll take it. Uh, just because I do think that having a second fence, we have to show that we are very serious about this. And, I, and I'm not saying that you're not. Um, right. I think that you, you have you know, made a lot of points to show us how committed you are to 
you know, running your business well. And that's something we appreciate. Um, and unfortunately, we, we do have to take a measure. And I'm sure you understand that. Absolutely. Um, so I'll, I'll move um, that the alcohol license of Sabzi restaurant will be suspended for eight consecutive days starting Thursday the 25th did we September 5th, 5th. We did. September 5th Thursday September 5th and um, with no further actions needed after that second okay. any co comment okay. yeah. uh, any further discussion no no Ms. Rice? Aye. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. I'll see you again, but again, not here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next up, Shannon Michael, 434 46 Massachusetts Avenue, uh, first offense. Okay, this Hi, is could you introduce yourselves? Okay, sure. My name is Wendy, and this is my mom, yeah. Mrs. Lowe, mm -hmm. and uh, she owns a restaurant, okay. and I'm the manager here. You're the manager at the restaurant? Yes. So, uh, could you tell us about uh, your reaction to the, violate, what, to the report, whether you think it's accurate, what steps you've taken, and so on and so forth? Sure, yes. Um, well, the restaurant we have been here is about over 30 years, and I think we are the first restaurant, Chinese restaurant in Arlington, too. And this is our first time, too. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully this will be the last time, too. And uh, I will change our guideline, and uh, we'll be ca more carefully, and to train my staff you know, more carefully. And the time, the, I think the time they come to check, I was away with my mom. So I think we had a new service person. So that's why, you know, I don't know what. I asked the, the bartender, which is my brother, and he told me he was, I think he was one to deliver. So the new person, they didn't carefully. He think he's older enough, the age. He, he's, she, I asked her, she told me, you know, they look like over 21, because I think she asked those two men for the license, for the ID, but they say they don't have. And she, she was thinking, she, she just from her look like, you know, she'd say, look like over 21. So she serviced the two, uh, I think it's about like a for the for the two men, you know. So that's why the, how, how that happens. So I wait, you know, more carefully in the future, you know, to, you know, train my staff, you know. Mm. Steve? Um, yeah, I, when I was reading this, I did find it interesting that IDs were asked for, and then that was just kind of disregarded. Um, yeah, we, they after. did check, for, they did ask for ID, but they, I think they say they don't have ID. So, and... Um, so and she just do by herself. She think you know because um, time my brother is not there. I think she he went to deliver. Mm. But you know e either way. Um, I know. I understand. The fact that she's new or she yes, could have been there yeah. for mm -hmm. twenty years that that really doesn't come into play here. Um, yeah, I understand. So and I as you know I guess I'll ask as we did the other um, the other individuals who came up. What type of like, overall policies have been implemented since this has taken place? And what, to make sure that this won't happen again? Well, we probably had to have the, you know, just, you know, have the class or something, you know, for the, you know, for them to, you know, taking some class, you know. Mm. For the wine and beer, you know, uh, class, you know. Or we have, just have hire someone to train them, you know. Yeah, well, I think, you know, you saw, um, you've been here, and you saw some of the other um, people before you, and they've, you know, put up signs. They've, you know, taken real proactive steps, and it doesn't, uh, the, you know, real concrete, um, you know, steps, and you just, I, I'm not getting that you're prepared to do so. Well, uh, well, I th the last thing I only, s I can say, if no ID and no service, you know, that's yeah. what I, I would tell my staff, you know. Mm, yeah, they I think, think it's, that's how yeah. it should be. Yeah, that's why I'm going to tell them like that, you know. So don't look from outside, you know, the age, you know. Just think, guessing the age, you know. Mm. Mr. Kier, do you mind if I go? Please. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely concerned that you're not uh, making structural change, that you're not recommending that you're going to make structural changes. 
saying that you'll train them more isn't a structural change. That's doing the same thing again. Mm -hmm. So we've seen three people come before you. Two of them brought real concrete steps. They said, you know, we're doing this change in the policy. We're doing this change in the signage. They're doing this difference in their training. They're doing this in terms of their, their you know, each, the two of them had very specific steps. One of them did not. And, you know, I was very unimpressed with that first one that didn't make any commitments. Whereas on the two that are making commitments to make changes, I'm, you know, I, I, forget, I, I believe that they're not going to come back. The first, the, you know, the first group that we had here that wasn't going to make any checks, we're going to see them again because they're going to make the same mistakes again unless they, or actually we won't because they won't get their license unless they change it. So for me to support continuing your license, mm -hmm. I'd like to hear you commit to, cert, to, to making concrete steps in your process that will keep this from happening again. Written, uh, you get to choose them. They're your business. But I mean, some of the things that other team, uh, other uh, I've worked with is written training, uh, periodic checks like mo monthly refresher courses, tips training, serve safe training, uh, uh, signage for your customers, signage for your employees. Mm -hmm. Like these are all things that are very specific and um, sub. Like their their process changes that are significantly different from saying, I'm gonna train them better. Are there anything that you're prepared to commit to? I think I wait to follow up this older, you know, the, the one you told I'm us. I'm sorry, you know. say it again? I wait follow up, you know, and to just tell them to do, you know, the things more, you know, tell, you know, everyone to be, you know, in training, you know, for this, you know. Yeah, I'm not satisfied. It's not concrete enough. Do you understand what I mean when I yes, say? Yes, I okay. do. I do but understand. You don't, you, are you unwilling to do any concrete steps? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Kira? I'm inclined to take the same formula that we, we took on the first one this evening and to, to recommend a, a, a five-day suspension that continues indefinitely until we receive a, a, a plan that, that the board can approve. And I recognize it's a first offense, and, and, and that, that, for me, that's, that's somewhat of a mitigating factor, but I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of confidence uh, that, that there are concrete steps being taken. Um, I, I probably won't be yeah. um, supporting that. I thought that, you know, that was appropriate for um, Mana House at the beginning, strictly because that was Second a offense. second offense, yep. and we didn't see, we didn't hear any, you know, steps to get better. Yes. And the, at the last time we handed out punishment, um, you know, we went through this process. Um, I think that would have been that that what you just recommended would have been the strictest punishment that we gave out throughout the whole sure. last process. Sure. And um, that so I just don't think that that really evens out at this point. I, I will makes sense to. Um, I don't think that needing after a first offense, I, um, you know, while I hope that concrete steps will be taken, um, and uh, you know, I'm sure that I'm confident that they will after, you know, no one wants to go through this process, um, which why would you? Um, but just having a first offense, I, I do think that you know a five-day suspension is appropriate, but I don't think that. You know, we have to, I, or I wouldn't be inclined to add, you know, ex, extending circumstances to that penalty. I think that five days is, you know, that shows that we do mean business and we're very serious about this and we're not, um, you know, we're not taking this lightly at all. Um, but being that it's a first offense, that's how, that's how I feel. So I'm more inclined, I support Mr. Carroll, and, mm -hmm. and I, I can't support just a simple suspension. And my reason, is, and so I, under, I agree completely with your statement that this were, that I'm behaving differently than I did the mm -hmm. last time, but I also feel like I learned from the last time. And the answer is, is I feel like we stepped up, we talked with each one of the people who came up there, and we talked to them about, you know, steps that they needed to take. We got a lot of lip service, and then they showed back up again. <laughs> and I feel like what I learned from that is um, I need to see from the license holder that they're committed to changing behavior. and. I believe I just asked, are you will you commit to making any concrete changes? And the answer I got was no, which I'm frankly quite flabbergasted with. 
And until that answer changes, I'm uh, unwilling. I do not think that they should hold the license. Okay. No, I um, I don't understand that though. And what? Why with say Sabzi, who we just um, dealt with, they uh, even last time they did bring very concrete. Sir, they brought. You know, they, it was actually very impressive what mm -hmm. they were willing to do, and that. Um, you know, so I don't think that even just showing those concrete steps means. It does not guarantee uh, success, I no. agree with that. And I, I don't think anything actually guarantees success, but. Um, well, obviously we need like a second for anything, so. It looks uh, like it's two yeah. to one, and um, I'm willing to. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So we could, I mean, one, one of us can hold the gavel until we get a second, so we should just come to an agreement on what we want to do and then make that motion. Uh, I, I'm feeling pretty strong, um, so you, I let you guys. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that we do have to uh, re require some steps. I mean, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be willing to go like a little shorter on, on the duration, even just to four, just in deference to the fact that this has been a longstanding business that, that hasn't had other violations, four with an indefinite suspension until we uh, approve a plan. I'm confident with that. Okay. okay. So I so move. I, I, I move. I move a. I move that we uh, sus suspend the liquor license for Shanghai Village for four consecutive days to, to commence on Thursday, September fifth, and that said suspension shall remain in effect indefinitely thereafter until such time as the board is presented with a uh, mitigation plan and appro approves it. So the motion that we're about to take a vote on, just so we're clear, is so it's four days. Uh, our next meeting is, Octo is August 19th. Mm -hmm. We invite you to provide a written plan for how you're going to prevent this from happening in the future. Okay. The Thursday before August 19th is our mm -hmm. deadline to get everything on the agenda and beforehand. Uh, if we see that plan and we approve it on August 19th, it's a four-day suspension. Mm -hmm. if the until we receive that plan and approve it, it's mm -hmm. an indefinite suspension, but it starts on Thursday, September 5th. That's the vote we're about to take. Okay. All right. Any particular comment you want to make right now before we take our vote? Um, boy, I don't think so. I had choice, right? Yeah. So. I don't think at this point you okay. do. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Rice? Fine. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Okay. Next up, Sweet Chili, 47472, Mass Ave, second offense. Um, my name is Viradet Kaira Ratikon. I'm a manager of Sweet Chili. Um, last year I was here, I felt embarrassed. And I also hired a tip training instructor come in to teach my waste staff. And this year has happened again. Um, I'm gonna rehire the tips training person to come to teach my waste staff again. And then I will also put up the sign for the customers and for my waste staff to remind them that uh, b before they're serving, yeah, they had to check the ID. And I always tell them that, uh, you know, from what I learned from the tips, you know, training um, class, anybody under 40 years old, just check, check their ID. Um, I've been open of business for 16 years. Mm, comments, questions? Here. So where do you think this went wrong this time? Because this uh, is two years in a row now. That my uh, my waitress, she just she's had a bad day with her personal personal. She has a personal personal problem, and then she never checked the ID. You're reasonably certain you know which employee this was. Yes, I do know. As soon as I got the letter. You know, I, I told them, see, I told you guys many times to check the ID. And you know, last year I got one, and this year I get it again, I don't know what's gonna happen. And you know, they, they, they say sorry, I say sometimes sorry, doesn't cut it. Hmm. I, I'm in trouble, not you. Hmm. And you know, I say, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm coming for the hearing tonight. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, I can promise you um, I won't be here next year. I, I will do my best to um, not gonna let the third time happen. 
I will rehire the uh, tips training person again, and then put up the sign for the customer and at the uh, the service service bar sta station station. Um, I um. So thank you for coming in. I um. I, you know, I get how serious you're taking this, and that's you know duly noted. I, I will recommend uh, uh, a 10-day suspension as with no circumstances following that. I think um, you realize what has to be done and um, you're trying your best to do that. Um, so I, I guess I'll go ahead and move a 10-day uh, suspension of Sweet Chili's license starting on September 5th. I'll, I'll second that. Um, I mean, I would prefer would have preferred to see it in, in writing the, the plan, but it sounds like you've definitely thought about this and you've you've stepped through a number of uh, specific actions that you plan to take, and I, I feel satisfied with that. And I will second the motion. Uh, I agree <coughs> with your assessment. Um, I, 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 su I support that as well. So we're about to take a motion vote on a ten day suspension, starting right. September fifth. And with the sincerest hopes, the changes you're making keep us from Thank you. seeing you here. Uh, any further comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Last but not least, Sejuan Dumpling, 1360 Mass Ave. First. Good evening. My name is Kwan. I'm the Sejuan Dumpling uh, owner. And, um, uh, I just owned the restaurant um, like five, almost five months at Winnew uh, in Arlington. And then uh, unfortunately, um, I got a letter from the product of Selectman a couple weeks ago about, um, I knew that we got the violation of, um, about my employee and they never check uh, the customer ID, maybe under, under age for the, uh, like a BNY. Um, after find out, I know that was on uh, June 11, which is Tuesday, was my day off. Unfortunately, um, it's happened, um, you know. And then um, I have a very serious uh, uh, like uh, training and then um, warning to the two uh, waiter who work on that day. Um, about then I tell them need to know that they have a right and they need to check every customer ID uh, like 35 or under and then uh, I definitely like um, I believe they not gonna do that again and because they know that um, that's like a there's like a last change if they really want to work to my restaurant. Um, and here I promise that um, it's not gonna happen again in my restaurant before I really um, need my employee to check every customer ID in the future to make sh to keep away you know, the violation or trouble. And that's all, yeah. I, would you like me to start? Or? Please. So I guess um, thank you for taking this seriously. Uh, what I didn't understand exactly in what you just described is, is was there any part of what you just described like a new policy that's happened since, or was that all stuff that happened before June, like the training, or is this a new training that you just described, or? Well, actually, I have um, uh, two waiter. They they just knew here in my restaurant. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I never, you know, or maybe talk to them about like uh, they need to ID every customer look like 35 or under, and that's why maybe the the problem happened. And then I, I, I re after I got the letter, I know um, we got a violation. I have a very serious um, talk with them about have to ID all the customer in the future. When do you anticipate hiring your next employee? I'm sorry? When do you think you'll hire your next employee? Right now or next? Like when do you think you're, you're when, is, when are you hiring a new waitress or waiter, do you think? Like later this year maybe? Um, well, as soon as they come, 
they what I'm trying to get at is how are you going to train the new ones differently well well, in the future, if I have like every new like waiter or waitress working in my restaurant, I have to talk to them first, and then make sure they uh, they will check the ID, customer ID, um, like wherever a customer look like thirty five years old or under, they have a right to do that, and they have to do that. Is your training only verbal? There's no written, no test or anything like that. Uh, no. Have you considered putting in things like that? Yeah, I will. Okay, so. If you look at some of these other restaurants that have come up that have had problems, some of the ways that they've mitigated it in the future is by adopting a more rigorous training program. And so one of the people who just came up said, didn't ind indicate that they were willing to change their training. And I found that pretty frustrating. So are you saying that you're willing to change your training for the future to make yes. it more rigorous? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to hear, can you tell me, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, do you follow what I'm, uh, like, uh, the more concrete things that you can say that you're w willing to commit to doing make me feel a lot better about us not seeing you for a future offense? Yeah, um, well, uh, definitely we will uh, do more training to my employee and then um, um, uh, definitely we're not going to do that, um, make that re a violation again. Like, do your employees go through tips training? Yes, they do. I'm not quite there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel. I, I mean, I feel like there, there's, a, there's a definite will to, to, um, to, to, to make improvements, but I would like to see them really more, more concretely. And I'm, and I'm leaning towards this, the same measures that we, that we took with two of the other licensees. Yeah. Uh, do you think, like, as we've talked about, like putting, you know, putting some signs up on the beer chest? Is that something that you'd be willing to do? Yes, I would. And you'd, you know, be willing to, you know, maybe ensure that if ev everyone who's even gone through tips certification would be willing to go through that again. And so I, th I think those are the type of, you know, that that's what we want to hear up here. Is what I've. You know, I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but you know, I think that's kind of what what we're looking for to um, to hear from you, so we know how to move forward. Um, so if you could, you know, give like a little a brief guideline if you'd be willing to do that, um, or in what else other steps you might take. It's just oh, no. well, um, I will um, I will try to. Um, um, talk with my um, wait staff or wait, waiter or waitress about um, have to check all the ID to, mm. to all the customer in the future <laughs> to make sure um, mm -hmm. we're not serving like co customer under underage. So uh, definitely we're not gonna make that happen again in the future. Yeah. I'm, I'm leaning towards four with an indefinite um, suspension pending a written plan, similar to what we just did with uh, Shanghai Village. Um, I, I, I think um, just, just we would just want to see in writing what, what you're, just a summary, just yeah. some of the things that, that you've, you're thinking about now putting into place for con controlling this. Um, if you could get it to us within the next couple of weeks, then then on uh, you know August nineteenth we could take that up. But um, yeah, no, I'll um, I'll second that. And I, I think you're committed to this. I do. Um, I, I think that you uh, you definitely don't. I, it's clear you don't want this to happen again. And I, I do think that just for our sake, seeing something written out would be really helpful. So if you could get that to us, I, I will support this. And um, I'm sure we won't see you here again. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry, did you want to make a So point? I'll make a motion. I, I, I'll move uh, to suspend the liquor uh, license for Szechuan's dumpling for four consecutive um, days uh, commencing on Tuesday, September 3rd. Um, said suspension to uh, be for an indefinite period of time until such time as we 
uh, the board receives and approves a, a, a written mitigation plan. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Do you I'm understand? Sorry. Yeah. So, I. Uh, well, we. Four. So we're we're about to we've, we're about to take a vote. They'll suspend your license for four days, starting on September third. Uh, we need to see a written plan for the changes that you're making in your process. Whether they're new signage, whether they're written training, it's written tests. Whatever processes that you are willing to commit to that you think will keep this from happening in the future. You submit those in writing. Our next board meeting is August 19th. Okay. And we, but you, we need you to have you to submit them the Thursday before the Thursday before that. So talk to come into the office or call up the office. Talk to Marie and talk to Marianne, and we'll help and they'll help you come. But it has to be things you're committing to do. If we approve that plan, then it's a four-day suspension. If you don't submit anything in writing, and if you choose, and if you, and, or if we're not satisfied with the plan. The suspension is indefinite until we get a plan that we approve. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was number four. Number five, outdoor seating. Thank you, Inspector. Oh. Thank you. oh. Thank you. I apologize, Inspector. On behalf of Chief Ryan and the members of the Yonlington Police Department, I thank you for your time. This is uh, obviously an issue yeah. that we take very serious. I apologize for not. I was sitting there saying it to myself, I was going to have to call. I was going to call on you, and then I moved right on. I apologize. No worries at all. All right. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for staying with us. Sorry about that. Next up, my fault. Uh, outside seating permit, Ensuite Burismo. So, what punishment would you like? <laughs> oh, I think I've had enough. Um, so Hong is here, but I'm going to be doing the uh, speaking. Sure. Do you want to point him out to us? Thank you. Uh, my name is Jamie uh, Vincendel. I'm the uh, manager of Brismo, and we're applying for an outdoor seating permit. Uh, as part of the due diligence, we took s uh, some time to put out a draft of the same materials we gave you, and we put it out and tried to get some signatures just to collect some information, let people know. About 140 signatures. Um, we are looking to expand the seating, uh, not expand the seating, sorry, to add seats outside. It would be six seats inside, an additional eight seats with tables, and uh, four seats roughly on two little benches. Um, it would be a small barrier of uh, planters, about two feet in height to separate the road, and what you can't see on the uh, plan is there's actually a tree right at our neighbor's space so it just kind of nice shade gives it a nice divide there too so uh, we chose to put it to the edge there but still give enough room for people to open doors um, the only comments that i had coming back from customers or about it was what are we going to do for bike parking um, which i don't have an answer to that but um, as far as what the plan is i mean i think we're hoping to uh, make the neighborhood a little nicer and achieve more of a cafe feel, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just I want to note from the planning, uh, report from the planning uh, department. The public sidewalk at the site is 15 feet wide. Applicants propose to use 11 feet of sidewalk for outside dining, leaving four feet free for pedestrian travel, which is minimum amount required by the town. Applicants have also demonstrated sufficient insurance coverage. Um, the, and the, uh, that was in addition to, that was just a part of a memo we received from one department and from other departments. I just thought it was particularly helpful. Comments? Questions? Mr. Carroll. Yeah, I just wanted to note uh, for the board's sake that um, as I did with the, the last um, application for outdoor seating, I did visit the, the site and take a look. And, um, you know, it does seem to square with all of the, the reports that we received. Um, that, that there is sufficient space there for this. I, I think it would actually be an amenity to, to, to the place. And ironically, I, I think the last application we received for outdoor seating, the, the bicycle parking was there and actually impeded the ability to have the furniture without, without constraining the, the passage on the sideway, in my view. Um, <clears throat> but I, I didn't see that there. I think that this would be a, a, um, 
you know, a positive amenity, and I'd like to move um, a approval subject to all conditions as uh, set forth. I am. I have a question. Maybe. Do you want to second for discussion um, or no? Yeah, I, I will okay. second. Um, although my my question is maybe for Marie might know this best. Um, when we were giving out the outdoor furniture to the Capitol Creamery, do you remember how much space was we they had on the sidewalk? With, So, so they had four feet as well? Okay, no, no, I was just curious. I was trying to picture what there is to here. Um, no, I, I think this will be a, um, a great addition to the neighborhood. So I'm looking forward to supporting it. Me too. Anyone in the audience here to speak on this license? Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Next up, request malt, wine and malt license change of manager for Zocalo. Hello, Hi. Janet Hello. Federico. How are you today? Good. Good. After tonight, maybe I want to withdraw now. Sorry? <laughs> After tonight, I might want to withdraw now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's one, there's some easy things you can do that will keep this from ever being a problem. <laughs> While we're on it, what's your alcohol policy? No one under 35. Um, actually, this is what I do now. I've been doing for the last three years for the manager. I come in on Friday and Saturday night just as a second set of eyes. So I walk around from 6 to 9 o'clock and just check each one that they're doing their job, the um, waitresses. So you're moving to a full time now? Yeah, she wants to take a little time off, so I'm going to go into position, but I'm still going to keep my uh, Friday and Saturdays as the second eyes on the liquor. I'll, I'll move approval. Um, Second. Any further questions? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in. Thanks. All right. Item number seven. Request common victual or license. A new one. Whole Foods Market Group doing business at Whole Foods. 808 Mass Ave. Who do we have to join us today? Good evening. How are you? Very well. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board. My name is Mike Scott with Nutter McLennan and Fish. With me is Jim Strain, a project manager from Whole Foods, and Katie um, Denise, who is the store manager and team leader for the Whole Foods in Arlington. Um, we're here tonight to talk about uh, proposed changes from the Johnny's to the Whole Foods. Yep. And as part of those changes, we'd like to propose some indoor seating at the front of the store. And since the, the seating is within a grocery store, I thought it'd be helpful to have a plan that shows where the seating can be located. Yep in the front of the store along Arlington Street. I, is that, no, 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 sorry, no, I apologize. Yeah, keep going. I thought I saw an easel there, but I realize now it's a tripod. <laughs> it is. Sorry, keep going. I don't want to delay, but uh, you can see the seating in the front. The seating is 30 seats with five cables. Um, Whole Foods has uh, seating at 26 stores with CV licenses without any adverse effects in the community. It's something that uh, customers find helpful to be able to consume prepared foods on the premises. Um, there's no wait staff. It's uh, all self-serve, as you probably know, if you've been a similar Whole Foods. And so it's something that they've been successful with at other locations and like to do it here in Arlington as well. Um, Kate's here to, to answer the question again about the operations of the store. Um, Jim's been overseeing the construction and we have to answer the questions about that as well. Any questions? Um, I have one. I don't know if you yeah, so uh, I've used, um, so I've been to Whole Foods, um, I guess, do you have two in Cambridge or more? I've been to two of them in Cambridge. And I Correct. think I've been to one up in Woburn. And so I've, I've understood, like, the, the seating I've seen has been on the outside of the cash register, and like, between the cash register and the public, so to speak. It, is there anything about the Arlington configuration that would be different from the other ones that I've seen? It's really not. It's, it's the opposite of the cash registers between the cash registers and the, and the front wall of the building. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll move approval. Um, I'll, I'll second. Um, let's just, I did just want to ask one question. I mean, usually we have, we have a fixed menu typically of just, just out of uh, curiosity. Did I understand this is a rotating You'll have rotating selections, so this is buffet style for the. Yeah, most that's part. correct. We don't have a. Um, or some of it's served. 
directly. So you can see in Exhibit D of the uh, application, there's um, a discussion about the menu items. And there's 500 menu items. There's not a set menu. It changes with the seasons. It changes with the days. Yeah. Um, some are um, served, and some are just um, you, you select yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. I think out of 500, I think we're good. So do you, did you make a second there, Mr. Kara? Yeah, I second. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think this is the first time Whole Foods has come before the Board of Selectmen since uh, you've come to town. And uh, I want to welcome you to town. I'm very excited to have you here. Uh, you obviously have really big shoes to fill. Foodmaster was a big part of our community, and you know a lot of people worked there or shopped there and so on and so forth. Um, and so you're, you're a different store in a different place, but I think uh, I think you'll like it here. And I'm, I'm really glad that you've chosen to, to come and do business here in Arlington. Thank you. We really want to be in the community market. Have that same kind of I think it's also noting that my understanding is that Whole Foods had extended uh, jobs to most, if not all, of the staff who had been at Johnny's at, at other stores around the area. And I want to thank you for that. That's correct. Um, as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, any comment from the public on this license? Mr. Kaplan, do you want to come to the mic? I'm just curious if you could um, give us an anticipated opening date. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, do you, do you mind coming up to the mic? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. We have millions of people at home and they can't hear you. <laughs> uh, the opening date isn't public yet, but I can tell you it will be before our uh, fiscal year end, and our fiscal year end is the end of September. So it will, be, it will be before then. Thank you. Thank you. Quick. I guess you're lucky uh, Mr. Greeley isn't here to ask for samples. Yeah. <laughs> 500 samples. <laughs> Great. Any other public comment on this license? Any further discussion from the board? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Three zero. Welcome to Arlington. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Expect, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. There is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Mr. Harrington. Stephen Harrington, Columbia Road. Um, I noticed earlier, I came in late, that um, you were punishing people for bylaw violations and of the alcohol licenses. And um, tonight I'm here to hold you accountable for bylaw violations. And um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. I was here two years ago, and um, most of you weren't on the board at that time, so I'll be gentle. But I think it's atrocious that the town of Arlington is using Mount Pleasant Cemetery as a municipal parking lot. You've been doing this now for four or five years. The manager, after I showed him a picture of a fire engine and the track across someone's grave site told me that this would continue until 2015. Now because of the construction on the public safety building and because of the construction on that section of the street, there are 40 or 50 vehicles parked in the Mount Pleasant Cemetery every day. That's against the town bylaw. And it has a sign right there. Two years ago I came because it's personal to me because when you come into Satcham Ave across from the public safety building, my parents, two of my aunts, two of my nieces are uh, buried in that cemetery. And they had been encroaching on the graves. Today, I happen to be going by and the usual 40 or 50 vehicles are parked all the way down Satcham Ave and on the side. And there was a, there was a service. And the people of that service should be appalled at the town of Arlington allowing their municipal employees and contractors to use that cemetery where our loved ones are buried to park all day long because you're not going to use Summer Street, which is totally open for parking, and just as close to the public safety building. They could use along the bike path. There's municipal parking there. Give them permits. You have a need. You have a responsibility you have a responsibility to make sure that your employees, and you ask the manager to tell them in no uncertain terms that they should not be parking in the cemetery. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arrington. Is there anyone else who's here for Citizens Open Forum? Mr. Kaplan. Oh. 
Thank you. Um, I had some specific questions uh, related to easements in uh, item 14. Is, is it better, should I wait till that time to ask them? Uh, yeah, I'll give you an oppor a brief opportunity to uh, ask then. I mean, I mean <laughs> Okay, they're very focused time. on, and primarily in the financial aspect, so. Sorry, uh, uh, I'd rather do it under then, so like. Okay, I'll thank I'll you. Give you a, I'll give you your t Great. shot at the mic then. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anyone else who's here for open forum? So, Mr. Chair, can yes. I respectfully request a five-minute recess? Uh, yes, uh, it has. We've had a, a busy meeting. Uh, we're going to do a quick uh, five-minute recess. We'll be back. It is the dot of nine o'clock. We'll be back at nine o five. Okay, we are back from our recess. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. Uh, next up is item number nine: request for stop sign at the intersection of Woodside Lane and Oak Hill Drive. Jake Upton. Yes, uh, I'm Jake Upton. I'm with Arlington 360. Uh, we are uh, developing the Arlington 360 project as part of the special conditions for the project. Um, the uh, t uh, traffic advisory committee to the ARB had been involved with um, kind of reviewing the traffic studies that were done and making recommendation during the permitting phase of the project. And there were special conditions put in place to um, do some traffic improvements to off-site locations to help with the overall traffic flows. Um, the areas that, uh, one of the areas that was identified was at the bottom of Woodside Lane where it comes into Oak Hill Road. Um, there was uh, sort of a tendency for people because of the wide curbing uh, to sort of not really stop and kind of merge into traffic and that had created some um, potentially dangerous situations. Um, and the Traffic Advisory Committee had recommended in that area in their study to bring in the curb lines so to restrict the entrances and the egress from, from uh, those roads to slow them down. And they also suggested that we consider putting a stop sign in. And obviously that would be at the discretion of the uh, Arlington uh, Board of Selectmen. So they suggested that we come for a vote to, to uh, have the stop sign done. It was really on their recommendation. Um, so that the board is aware, um, the, 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 the curb, uh, the pinching into the curbs and the uh, ADA sidewalk uh, entrance points of those uh, curbs have already been installed. Um, so the new curbs are in. Um, all of the work is done on this except for the striping of the crosswalk, I believe. Um, and so we're just holding off on doing that until we have final clearance as to whether we're adding a, a, a striping for the stop sign and the actual stop sign itself. So. I, I have a diagram here if the board would like to take a, a I think we got a you know we got a small you version. Can see it, it it's sort of small type and everything. Yeah, I, I can see um, it but again it's just a, a normal uh, stop sign. Um, it's all engineered through our traffic design group um, and it's really at the discretion. So we've been um, encouraging neighbors to have opinions one way or the other um, to to you know uh, weigh in on the decision um, and from our perspective it's really a town decision. Uh, we're ready to go either way. Questions? Well, um, since this came from TAC and I truly respect all their recommendations, I'll move approval. Um, I don't think it has to be subject to all conditions, but um, I um, no, thank you for uh, a very in-depth presentation and um, I look forward to getting this going. Uh, I'll second the motion. I'm, I'm very familiar with the, with the um, the area. This is a heavily trafficked um, pedestrian area for uh, students going to Bishop as well as to the, um, the high school in particular. And um, it, it can be tough when you're coming down that, that, that hill. I think it's, it's very appropriate. It'll be an amenity. I mean, I know there were a few off-site amenities that were part of the project, and, and um, I'm glad to see this going forward. Anyone in the audience who wanted to comment on the stop sign? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you for your patience. Okay, and also want to just extend an invitation to the Board of Selectmen to come um, have a tour whenever is convenient for you. Just uh, give me a call or contact me and we'll yeah. set it up. We'd like I, more. We'd yeah. love to do it. I know you gave a tour to a previous version of this board and I couldn't make it, so I'd really love to see uh, what's, what's going on up there. Okay, well, I'll, I'll send a note around or post my email address with, with Marie. That'd and, be great. Uh, we'll, make, we'll make a plan. I'd okay. be really excited Appreciate to do it. Thank that. you very much. Thanks, Jake. All right, next up. Uh, vote special municipal employees as uh, related to the Arlington Historic District Commissions. Stephen McCow McCowden, chair. 
Is he here, or are we doing this on the basis of the memo from Ms. Rice? I don't see him here. Okay. Um, I, um, I did receive a request um, from the Board District Commission for information on the special municipal um, employee designation. This board has made that designation on other occasions uh, for other volunteer boards. Um, I've provided the same explanatory information, and Mr. Bakauka has provided a letter on behalf of the um, commission indicating uh, that uh, the commissioners and the um, executive secretary do meet the requirements for designation as a special municipal as special municipal employees. I'm happy to answer any questions. But basically, the root of this is that you can, if we designate someone as a special municipal employee, for, we can only do that if they are, uh, what's the two, not compensated or compensated at fewer than 800 hours per year. Correct. And then we do this, we give them, once we make this designation for this position, people hold this position can then both work like a, uh, they can appear before the town basically as like lawyers or architects or whatever, they can be contracted and do this volunteer work. And if we didn't do this, they would have to choose between one or the other. Correct. Um, some of these boards are staffed uh, with professionals um, with sort of specialized areas. This one in particular, you have architects, landscape architects. Um, other boards, you have attorneys, accountants, other architects, um, people who represent clients. So if they're locally based, which of course you need to be to be on these boards, um, without the special municipal employee designation, they're somewhat <coughs> hampered in their ability to carry on uh, their livelihood before other boards. This designation does not permit them to appear before the board on which they serve, but just other ones. Yes, Carol. Unless they're appearing on behalf of themselves, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I think that's fine. Does it make sense? Okay. Uh, could you get, could you have a sense, uh, we don't have actually a comprehensive list of all of the previous um, positions that have been designated special municipal employees Right, in there the have town. been more since, since um, I have been here. Um, I know that the school committee was done many years ago, uh, but since I've been here, uh, the redevelopment board, the, I'm sorry? Yes, and the assessors, and I think this is the third one. Okay. Okay. Great. Do I hear a motion? I um yeah I move I move approval. I'll second. And oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think the retirement board as well. Um, I'll second and just say uh, on the basis that we really rely on our volunteers for you know quite a bit of work and to limit our volunteer force Absolutely. would be foolish on our part, in my opinion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Next up, mm -hmm. number 11, for approval, policy use of town owned property for publicity and promotion and time allowed for banners. So we have a draft policy that is, uh, Ms. Rice, I know you refined this for us since our last meeting. That's correct. I incorporated the changes that the board had requested at um, the June 20. 7th? 17th. 17th. <laughs> 17th meeting. Any comments? <clears throat> Motion? No, I, I, I move approval of the, of the policy. A second. And uh, I just want to say, yeah, th thank you very much to Ms. Rice for, for all of the work in this. I mean, I've you know talked quite a bit with the, the manager I've, as I've been going around to different you know, meetings and groups. There seems to be a lot of pent up demand out there for use of banners, and they, they are a, a, a great um, amenity if they're used properly. So I'm glad that we're putting some structure around this, and, and um, uh, I'll be bringing, as we have on the agenda, the next item. I'll be bringing something to you uh, to to utilize this policy right off the bat. So, um, is that the 11B or is that something else? What's mm -hmm. that? 11B. 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 Okay, that's correct. All right. Uh, a second. Yeah. All right. Uh, for those, I guess so. So the the key to this policy is that if anyone wants to um, to put up banners, is you have to find a group within the town, a committee or commission within the town, who will who will be your uh, what's the word we used? I'm losing it already. The um, endorser, sponsor, sponsor. Thank sponsor. you. So if you don't want your banners, you have to find a sponsor within the town. And then come to us for approval. To, and then come to the board select for approval. That's really two yeah. steps. And so the board selectmen could be the sponsors, but it feels like in general we want to 
reserve that for unusual occasions. Like to me, it seems like Town Day is one of the more logical sponsors, but uh, there aren't too many after that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I actually listed out for the manager. Maybe I don't know if it's appropriate. We could put that in a form that for the packets. I listed out for the manager some that I'm aware of that that are hanging out there, potential and and, and, and pending requests that, that I've heard, and I'm sure that there are a lot more because I'm just one of five members here. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the new policy, please say aye. 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 All right, three zero. That is done. Mr. Curio, B. Yeah, this this should be very simple. Um, you'll recall that the the at our last meeting, uh, this board approved uh, the hanging of banners to promote the um, Arlington Live Summer Arts uh, Block Party, which I will say was an astounding success. And um, you can read all about it in the Advocate. Our new reporter had a great story in the in the front page of the Advocate. Um, about it. Maybe I'll talk about it in new business depending on how late we are. Um, <clears throat> but um, those banners, uh, which as you will recall were sponsored by ATED, um, were very specifically designed uh, such that uh, the event specific information could be removed. It's a lower portion of the banner. The uh, Arlington Alive is really a, a, a broader a, a initiative uh, for the town, a, a generic branding, if you will, of the, the, the cultural um, uh, offerings of the town. So my motion is to permit the uh, top Arlington Live portion to remain in place un until the next set of banners r rotates into place, which is likely to be, town, town day is likely to come with a, with a request. Would you like me to make that request specifically? Well, I'm going to come before you on the 19th. Okay. Okay, so, so my motion is just to permit, permit the Arlington Alive portion of the banners to remain in place until the next, the next set of banners is rotated in. Second, or do you? Um, I'll, I'll second for discussion for okay. the time being. I, okay. I have one on, from, I, I agree that I like the signs up. I think they look great and what they stand for. Um, what, one thing with um, setting this policy that um, I do have one question about is that I, I think I'd like to put a specific date on when they okay. would come down um, specifically because you know moving forward setting a policy that just says you know banners can stay up for the time being until something else comes I don't know if that's an appropriate um, policy step to take or you know we might there might be a you know, Christmas banners hanging out there in the middle of winter. Oh, absolutely. We have a policy yeah. like that. Well, let me let me tell you some of what I've learned about banners. I learned more about banners <laughs> than I ever wanted to learn. <laughs> so we very appropriately in this this policy, you know, we we set, um, um, you know, said that the, the town must be the ones to put them up, put them down. There's a cost associated with that, and and. Um, that can't always be scheduled within a within a shift. I mean, so there is a cost that has to be levied. So, it, in the scheduling, I, I think it's helpful to have a, a sense of, of what the, the queue is of, mm -hmm. of requests that are coming in, because it's possible for the organizations then to to uh, partner with one, with one another and to make it easier on our DPW, so that when one set is coming down, the others are going up at the mm -hmm. same time. You're not. Just, crews aren't going through twice. You are absolutely correct, though. And um, I had a brief discussion with the manager about this as to whether or not it should be enshrined in our policy or should just be an operational guideline to have actually a regular rotation so that an expectation can be set. This is like the last time the chair said that, that he, he would like to see some procedures around this in addition to the, to the policy. So one way that my is that you can set, say, a date of, say, September 30th or, yeah. you know, or whatever. Which would, so no later than September 30th. Think that, that we're going to uh, make it a, be a future decision. Yeah, I'd be comfortable. So that's fine. Yeah. So no later than September 30th or until such time as, uh, uh, such yeah. earlier time that, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we, we might approve. Okay. Uh, I'll second that. So we have a motion. We've got a second. Any other discussion? No. Mr. Manager? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next up is update on utility pole resolution. Um, Mr. Leonard is here and he's requested, and I know that Mr. Leonard came into the office and requested an update on the utility pole resolution. 
So as um, many of you will remember, Mr. Leonard came to us with a 10 voter petition uh, in the spring. And uh, we, in, we agreed with what he was trying to do, though we didn't agree with the, the specific mechanism that he was trying to, to choose. So we created a utility poll working group, which we recruited three people successfully for that we approved for. We've had, and that group has held uh, at least two meetings, and I think they've had a couple other informal ones. They've uh, gone out and they've surveyed a number of polls, and they've given um, themselves kind of an interim reporting back on, the, on those polls. And I indicated to them that I thought it would be healthy if they came back and reported to the board as a whole um, shortly after Labor Day. And so that is my uh, current, uh, and so that's uh, where that particular project is at this time. Mr. Leonard, is that the update you're looking for? Yeah, you're okay with me? Yep. Please do. Good evening, John Leonard, uh, Precinct 17. Um, as most of us are aware, uh, there was an incident of utility poles coming down on June 2nd of this year. At that particular time, uh, there was no actual real idea on what brought these polls down. At that particular time, according to the newspaper article, uh, town manager was informed by Public Works that it appeared rot could have been involved. I was just wondering where it's over a month now, uh, how that, for lack of a better word, investigation turned out in regards to was any new information discovered, uh, either by way of the town manager. I have talked a couple of times to DPW Mike Rodemaker. He's been very helpful. Uh, unfortunately, though, it appears that he, as I would call it in my language, he's being stonewalled by the usual, hey, it happens. And I know that doesn't satisfy me, and I don't think it satisfies many of the residents of Arlington with all the work that has been going on to basically say, hey, if a poll falls, that hap that, hey, it happens. I wonder if there's any way somebody could elaborate. Is any more information come on to the scene? I haven't, I know, so I know that we did note that the utility poll working group, we did, that had just happened when we were meeting and we did definitely note that. Ms. Adam, did you have any particular update on that that you thought? Well, so I, I guess I'll say, uh, it bears mentioning there was very strong winds that day. A poll didn't just fall down. Uh, but on site, uh, DPW staff that did see the poll, did, as you mentioned, saw rot, but there was no further forensic investigation into the material or contained within the poll, so there's no further information. But the suspicion is that the poll was rotted. The reason I mention this is because there were some questions that quoted you, Adam, that basically said you weren't sure how often Verizon investigates their polls, but that uh, by way of the article, which I have a copy of, that uh, questions would still be asked, that the investigation would continue as to try and look at all aspects of this. Again, like I say, uh, are we just basically saying it happened and that's it? Or is there anything that, uh, are more questions being asked? Or should we just basically say that if a poll falls in Arlington, it falls and that's it? I think that that's uh, a good, I hadn't framed that specific question about the uh, about that particular rotting uh, to Verizon. I know that we're the, the the utility pool working group was talking about public safety and looking at that fall in general. Like it was one of the things. I will make sure that I pursue that specific question with the Verizon guy. I haven't I haven't asked him that specific one. Have you had a meeting with the Verizon people since the incident? Not in person. No. Okay. Um, in another article in the same newspaper dated 3 14 13 of this year it states that john leonard gave 20 problematic polls to the board of selectmen 
which will then be addressed one by one with Verizon's help. Uh, I don't know where that idea came up that I was going to be involved, but I'm curious of the 20 some odd pictures that I presented to the Board of Selectmen back in February, has any of them been bought up to Verizon? And the reason I mentioned this is because I personally went out and looked at all 25 locations yesterday and nothing's been done. Oh, Mr. Leonard, I'm not sure that that's true. I, in fact, I'm fairly certain. I, I, among, so the, so I, def, I think that I'm not sure exactly what the quote was, but definitely you did thank, helpful, thank you, were thankful, you provided us with pictures of the ones that you thought were, and those were definitely the starting point that I used with the utility pole working group. Uh, and I didn't, if there's an intimation there that you were going to help with that group, then, you know, I, did, I didn't mean to make that. Mm. Uh, and uh, I would have to double check, but I, that was definitely the first set of polls that the utility group worked at, and there are definitely a number of them that they looked at and they thought were, were, were fine. So, uh, but I don't, I don't have that, unfortunately, I probably should have, but I, but I don't have that, uh, their first review with me. When I, when I mentioned these causes, like some of them down at Edgerton Road yeah. is blatantly obvious because that double pole tilted has been there whatever. But it is a number of factors. In other words, like it's not just because the pole was straight. And I bought out in the pictures a number of factors. Yeah. Cables hanging, cables cut off, not protected, old equipment left up. So if the individuals, meaning no offense to them at all, are basically just looking, going out and looking at the structure of the pole, that's not what that picture is supposed to be giving, the message I've been giving. Mr. Leonard, there are still seats available in the working group, and if you want to help out, your help would be most appreciated. As I mentioned before, I mean no disrespect to anybody in this room, but I can't work with you. Okay. Uh, we've lost 14 years. And again, meaning no disrespect, you did vote against my original motion. Sure. I, I mentioned uh, that I'm better off working independently on this because I'm getting much more accomplished than another committee and possibly losing another 14 years. Some of the other highlights that have come up that I have found about on my own investigation is that I have talked to members both active and retired from Verizon. At least one of whom is on our working group. And some of them have laughed when I mentioned, could you please tell me how many poll inspectors Verizon has and how often the polls are inspected? Just using Verizon as an example. And the comments that I have gotten is, John, give it a break. Verizon hasn't had poll inspectors for 10 or 15 years. Uh, if, if we haven't had 10 or 15 years of poll inspectors and the majority of the polls in the town of Verizon, then, I mean, I'm not saying we're sitting on a time bomb, but what are we waiting for in regards to like, it's just waiting for an accident to happen. Other examples I've come across is I talked to a member of uh, NSTAR just the other day, and they basically said that uh, in an area such as Verizon, as in Arlington, they wouldn't necessarily inspect the poles belonging to NSTAR. They have what they call it to me as a walking group where in an area where there is a lot of NSTAR poles, they would designate a certain time and their walking group would go out and check their, their, their polls. But in an area such as Arlington, where Arlington basically has a lot of Verizon polls, they would not have a walking group. I contacted, uh, I believe it was RCN. RCN basically stated, we don't have poll inspectors. We don't test the polls. All we basically do is we just go up a poll and maybe test a foreign voltage. But as far as the structure of the poll, Mr. Leonard, we don't have anybody. You know, the general impression I seem to be getting is that if it's another utilities poll, why bother? Because if it hits the fan, it's going to be their problem. Other things I have discovered, up in five corners, 
they replaced a couple of poles up there over, over a certain period of months, I guess. When they went to tag the poles to say who the ownership is of the poles, they put 9X stickers on the poles, a small thing. But 9X stickers, 9X hasn't been around since 1997. God forbid, by the time all of us are gone, people are going to assume that 9X owns those poles. But yet in the same right, where this accident happened on Mass Avenue last month, they put Verizon stickers on the poles. There's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no, there's no set set of rules here. Other locations have also, other conversations I've had, every pole in the town of Arlington, every utility pole, has to be grounded, whether it's done by a Verizon, an NSTAR, an RCN, every pole has to be grounded. Shortly before tonight, this afternoon, I checked out the three poles that were replaced on Mass Avenue. None of the three are grounded. These three poles just went in, and there's no grounds on them, but there's a nice Verizon tag on them. I'm wondering, again, what more does the Board of Selectmen possibly need, or the Town of Arlington need, to say, how long is this going to go on? Mr. Leonard, we've, adopt, we've heard what you had to say. We've adopted a policy that we think that in the long run is going to change, or is going to help change the, the behavior of the, the companies that have polls in Arlington. We're going to, I, unless this Board sees fit to make a change in the short term, we're going to let that policy run and see if it works. And until we're, and I don't see, you're not telling anything that's going to make me change my mind and change the way that I'm tackling this. Why am I having a problem understanding then that as I proposed with the resolution that the Massachusetts general laws give the town the authority that the Board of Selectmen doesn't want to use that authority? Because as we told you at the Selectmen's hearing, because as we talked about at the town, at that town meeting, we don't think, we do not read the law the way that you read the law. That law does not give us the authority that you think it does. But yet town meeting overwhelmingly sent you a message that it does. No, town meeting sent us a, a message that they think that the, there's a problem that needs to be resolved. But to, uh, with all due respect for town meeting, and I'm a member of town meeting and I have high respect for that institution, it is not a lawyer either. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I think I've, I've raised this um, previously. I mean, I think it was properly stated at Tommy. I went through the, the, um, the transcript that, that was uh, provided to us in our, our packet. It was properly stated that the problem is that local boards, local municipalities, do not have tools given to them in the law to specifically enforce and penalize the utilities. I mean, if you, you just sat here, you just saw, we do have specific authority in, for example, liquor licensing. I think you just saw us exercising that because the law gives us specific ways in which we can penalize the, the, um, uh, those establishments. We're not, uh, we don't license the, the polls. We don't have that authority. Now, several years in a row, the general court has had pending legislation to try to give authority and there is probably maybe one action that we can take tonight um, I looked it up today to see the current status um, house number 2952 it's currently um, I think it's it's still with the uh, Joint Committee on um, Telecommunications Utilities and Energy I'll read it because it's very short <clears throat> it just says section 34 B of Chapter 164 of the General Laws is appearing in the 2010 official edition is hereby amended by inserting after the word poll in line five the following. Provided further that a city or town may enforce this section by the enactment of a local ordinance or bylaw prohibiting double polls beyond 90 days authorized by this section, violation of which may be punishable by a fine not to exceed a maximum of $1,000 per occurrence. Now this was favorably reported out of committee last year. It didn't make it all the way through the legislature. It's making its way through again this year. Mass Municipal Association has it as one of the, their top legislative priorities and they update us on it. If the MMA felt that communities had the authority already to regulate this, I don't think they'd be making it one of their top priorities. They realize that we need this, this ability. And I'd, I'd like to move that, that this board 
write a letter to the to the committee, the joint committee um, on um, <clears throat> telecommunications, utilities, and energy, expressing our support for um, for this bill and uh, giving giving local communities the authority to. Uh, um, I, I will second that. I um, actually attended that hearing at um, the state house, and there were several other bills that also you know dealt with different fines for double poles like, yeah I know there are similar month. ones and this just this seems to be the one that the MMA has uh, mm. kind of uh, yeah and I, I hopefully it does move numbers. forward and it's something I'll, I'll hope to pay attention to as well but I think writing a letter is a good step okay mm. so just just to clear things up for the record no matter what I presented to you in those Massachusetts general laws you're saying that you can't use them at all? I'm saying that those, I do not agree with your interpretation of those laws. Okay. I just wanted that for the record. Finally, there is a couple of organizations which you, you might be aware of, but I thought I'd bring them to your attention. The, the ANSI, which is the American National Standard Institute, is the Institute which measures the strength of telephone poles or utility poles. Mm -hmm. NESIC, NESC, National Electric Safety Code, is for the design for poles for ice, wind, and etc. The reason I bring this up is because on any of the poles that I've examined in the town, there is nothing on the pole that would be, and they're probably not required the utilities to do this that would label for the common man to basically see this is the type of pole this is. And what I'm getting at is that let us say if I put up an average pole in the town of Arlington and then due to whatever kept adding, kept putting stuff on it, there's nobody that could prove that that pole cannot handle that because the type of pole, class of pole as they call it, is not marked on the poll, and the records are not available for any town. So I guess what I'm getting at is it's interesting to go around Darlington or even other towns and just look up at a poll and wonder, my God, look at all that stuff up there. And there's nothing on the poll that basically says, that's okay, I can handle it. So, and there's nothing to, for basically the owner of the poll to stop saying to, as I said before, tenants, come on, sure, pay me so much, and you know, I'll let you use that as an access to get to your location. There's nothing at all, even on the polls, uh, the new polls that went up, that basically says, this is to let you know 20, 30 years down the road, I can't take much more. There's just too much weight. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes. So I, I think, that again, I mean, this is a state issue. Interestingly, my, this shows you how boring I am. For my, some of my summer reading, I pulled a book out of Robbins called um, The Age of Edison, which was traced the history <clears throat> of the electric light, electric lighting. This pro, and an awful lot of the book, an awful lot of it, talked about this problem of wires being strung everywhere on poles, issues with poles, in the early days, telegraph operators were getting zapped because they were, they were stringing <clears throat> you know, electrical lines with telegraph lines and, and telephone lines and, and everything else. So it's not a new problem. Unfortunately, this goes back 120 years. Um, but we have to rely on the state. The, the states put in some regulatory frameworks around this, but they didn't see fit in their wisdom to give us a lot of tools. That's why I think that this one step here of <clears throat> trying to put a, a line in the sand and, and getting the ability to actually levy some fines actually gives us some concrete force. They're not going to care otherwise. It's only when you hit hit the pocketbook that... that, that well, that against Mr. Kuro, as they say, these, these requirements, for lack of a better word, are, are in effect now. And but see, what's the punishment? What's the pe penalty that's in there? Are we allowed to fine? We aren't. What I'm getting at is it's... There's nothing maybe that says, okay, well, you, it says standards that they should live by, okay. Right. 
and maybe there's nothing that says that they, you know, they, the amount of the fine. But I guess what I'm getting at is there's, there's no watchdog effect on this. That's, That's right. So we're in agreement. How does a town of 300 and some odd towns determine? Is that a safe pole that's going up even tomorrow in some locations? We're in agreement. You know, we're in a, we're this, this is what agreement. I've been trying to get across from the very beginning, that somehow, if you're going to come into our town, you're going to do business our way. But that's why I'm proposing that we, we vote to express our, and join, you know, we're joining other communities. Other communities have expressed their support for this to allow communities to levy fines and, and adopt local. Lastly, and then I'll leave you alone, I, I noticed that last Thursday when I was making my rounds, there was an organization called Wave Glide, a wave guide, stringing cable up Mass Avenue from pole to pole. And as far as I can determine, it seems like they've gone all the way to Lowell Street, from the Cambridge line at least to Lowell Street. They might just be an organization that it's a contract that it's been hired. Yeah. Uh, could could I maybe members of the town be enlightened? Is there they would have had to come through your office? They did. They did the hearing. I forget exactly what it was. That they Is got. it fiber optic or? I'm trying to remember what it was. I thought it was an internet. Uh, it is data. Like a it mini. It is data. Yeah. 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 I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember the gentleman came. He saw. He was in fact. He's here twice. Over the course of a month or six weeks, he had work plans for us. Uh, they went through our building department. We approved them. Okay, because I have noticed in two locations, one is Pole 111 mm -hmm. on Mass Avenue, which is right in front of Marble Tile, and I think another one is Pole 98. That basically, if you let me finish, as I say, every pole is supposed to be grounded. The grounds are gone. Mr. Leonard, I appreciate your attention to these details, yeah. but there are more efficient ways to report them. I, nonetheless, I'm sure we'll, having heard your suggestion, I mean, you, to look into them, we'll, I mean, we'll follow up and make sure to, to look into those. But and I invite you to keep giving us that information, but I'm not sure we have to get on, yeah, I'm not sure that now is necessarily the right moment. I hope it's not the right moment when somebody touches the pole and there's no ground on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. So we have a motion on the table. Uh, uh, is there any further discussion on it? No. I agree. I, th I, agree. I think I would like that power too. I think that would be very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Other than I think. Uh, we'll. Th the motion is uh, write a letter of support and to the joint to the joint committee on telecommunications, yeah, so utilities, imagine, utilities, and energy. Yeah. Which, in general, when we write these letters, we're smart enough to CC our delegation and so on and so forth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Other than saying that, hopefully, I wish Mr. Leonard would coordinate his efforts a little more with the working group as opposed to just coming before us and dealing with that. I think that's the uh, right funnel of communications. Yeah, I agree with him. I continue to agree with him on the root issue, but I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but I think that the policy, or the process, and the policy that we've adopted is the right, is the best tools that we have to tackle the problem as he's described. All right, with that, is there a motion? Uh, vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Ms. Rice. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, oh, I, uh, pardon me. I should say, we're now talking about the vote, the taking the instrument on the Mass Ave corridor process, uh, project. That's correct, uh, Mr. Dunn, and that instrument has been provided uh, to um, the members of the board. Uh, two originals uh, you're being asked to generate. Um, and in those two uh, orders of taking, which will be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, um, they contain all of the temporary and permanent easements necessary for um, conducting the renovation and improvement work on the sidewalks in connection with the Mass Ave Corridor project. As you know, the um, town meeting voted in 2011 to authorize uh, the exercise of this authority. Uh, we've been working closely with Mass DOT to um, have uh, the takings appraised um, and to uh, calibrate the timing so that um, it wasn't done too early because uh, the temporary easements, which are three years, do begin to run as soon as those um, instruments are recorded. So um, 
because now my understanding is that the advertising uh, date is expected to be in the fall. Um, this was the appropriate time to have the board execute those instruments, get them recorded at the Registry of Deeds, send out um, the communications uh, to the property owners. We have already sent out uh, two rounds of communications, the most recent July 1st, on or about July 1st, um, at the behest of um, Mass DOT suggested we send out what was called an offer letter, where we uh, set forth uh, what we expect the, the appraisals to date to show, um, and um, explaining about the project, we included an FAQ page. We provided contact information for the planning department for anyone who had questions. I understand some people have called up and had some questions or needed more information. There would be another more formal um, round of uh, notices of taking that will go out after the um, instruments are recorded, and um, people can take those uh, along with the W-9 form, which we did provide in this most recent mailing, and we'll provide access to in the website, to come in and um, seek uh, damages associated with those takings, and those are damages that have been appraised um, by a qualified appraiser that uh, we selected and retained. I'm just re I'm regretting not asking this earlier. I don't see the actual vote that you want to take. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't write one out, but um, I would just ask that you uh, vote to execute um, the instrument of taking in uh, the form that's been provided to you or substantially the same form in case um, some changes have to happen. I don't expect that there will be any. Um, we were making last minute changes up until about three o'clock today, but um, I think it is complete. But So I would just say if the board would vote uh, to execute the instrument of taking um, or um, something in substantially similar form for recording at the Registry of Deeds. So moved. All right, so uh, we'll go to the second. We'll vote the second. Um, Mr. Kaplan, I haven't forgotten you. Is there any board discussion? Mr. Kaplan. Thank you, Chairman Dunn. Um, I, I have some questions in the interest of um, the, the public. Oh, how many uh, total uh, parcels or deeds are affected by this? Uh, the number of parcels is around, and I'm sorry, I don't have um, I don't have the spreadsheet with me. But the number of parcels is around 130. The number of total easements is around 225. Okay. Um, have all the or 230 if you include the permanent ones? Yeah. Have all the appraisals been completed? Um, except for yes, all of the appraisals have been completed. There are a handful um, that will need to be redone. Okay. Um, when these appraisals were done, were the property owners offered um, to walk the prop by the appraiser? They were. Okay. Do you have signatures to that effect, or or people declining? We uh, we don't require people to sign. The appraiser handled that and has certified in connection with each of his appraisals that that opportunity was uh, afforded. Okay. I've heard at least one report where the owners just weren't contacted or offered that. Um, and so what's the to total value for all the appraisals? It's approximately $82,000. Okay. Um, and then the costs associated with the takings and the uh, registry of deeds fees and everything together, what's that total? Uh, the registry of deeds fees are $75 per uh, recorded instrument, so that's 150 plus $75 per page for the plans, which are 14 pages, 14 times 75. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, how much is all this going to cost? <laughs> 150 plus 14 times 75 plus 82,000, assuming everyone um, demands, uh, you know, some people have already made donations of the uh, damages amount. Um, some others may choose to. They certainly don't need to. Um, right. so, 85,000 on the high end. Okay. Uh, how many do donations do you have so far? I don't know. I think around a dozen. Okay. And are these revocable so people can change their mind? Sure. Okay. All right. And so the, these funds are coming out of Chapter 90 state funds that would otherwise be used for road repair and sidewalk repair. Is that right? They're coming out of Chapter 90 funds. I can't address the rest of your statement. Oh, well, Chapter 90 funds are usually f used to fund road repairs and maintenance, right? I don't know that these funds are coming at the expense of other funds. Yeah, I, 
Uh, is there any supplemental funds coming from the state then, f just for these takings? I, I, think it's, I think you can safely say that yes, we would have used this money for other things. Okay, all right. And uh, how much would it cost to just fix the bad sidewalk? Say 40 or 50 feet or so that... I've never seen an estimate that 40 or 50 feet... I, I think Mike... Yeah. Mike, you, so we're on a specific... I assume you've done... There's been very on-point constructive questions. I, I've thought about this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, thank you. I guess the total sum then is, what, eight? you said 85,000? Approximately. Okay. Um, and that includes hours of legal work and everything, or are you doing having to do all that? I'm doing the legal work. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wanted to discuss the vote and the takings on the takings? No. Any other All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Record that as a three zero vote in the affirmative. Thank you. Correspondence received. <coughs> Jane Howard, who would like to thank the board for the receive uh, our award of the Board of Selectors Award or to her, to which I'm sure we thank her for her thank you, but she was the one who did all the hard work in this mm. case. Yes, she was. <laughs> yeah. uh, do I have a motion for a seat? Yeah. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Three zero. New business. Great. Um, I would just like to introduce what um, the advocate, Spencer. I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, Spencer, but he's going to be on new Buell. report. Buell. Welcome, Spencer. Welcome to Arlington. Anything else? No, I'll be back on the uh, 19th for my request for a town meeting. We look with breathless anticipation. Juliana. Uh, nothing new, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Adam. I have a few things. Uh, first, I want to thank the board for their participation in our goal setting session uh, in June. Uh, I know when we come back together in September, we'll be uh, once again furthering and finalizing those uh, goals. So thank you for spending a Saturday morning with me uh, in June. Uh, in the board's packet, there was a letter of grant award from the DEP from Commissioner Ken Kimmel in regards to a Mystic River Watershed grant we received. That was received in partnership with the Mystic River Watershed Association, the Town of Arlington, and the Town of Belmont. The grant amount was $39,580, and that's going to allow the towns, uh, along with the Mystic River Watershed Association, to conduct research and analysis and review characteristic runoff criteria, surface and soil conditions that should hopefully result in identifying sites that could be used for future low impact development projects that can provide additional water quality improvements. Uh, so I know our own town engineer, Wayne Schwinnard, put a lot of effort into getting this grant put together and will also be putting effort into seeing the grant expended. So I, I thank him for that. Uh, I also wanted to let the board know in their packet uh, was a report based on the public uh, website survey uh, we had released. As the board knows, we're currently redeveloping and redesigning the town's website. And as part of that, we asked citizens, or, or really anybody who utilizes the website, for feedback. Uh, so we had a nine-question survey. Just over 1,300 people took the survey. And our public information officer, Joan Roman, uh, condensed all of those results into a report which was provided to the board and will also make available uh, on the town's website for anybody who took the survey to see the results. Some interesting results came back. Um, most people seem to look at the site for what you would expect, town service information, contact information, emergency information, election information, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the number one thing people would like to see added to the site or enhanced that we currently don't have is online payment or permit transactions. Uh, so uh, though that's not part of the website design, it's also something that's currently underway. So I think that was uh, some interesting information we received back from the public in that regard. Um, I want to let the board know uh, and the public know that through the good work of our legislative delegation, we did receive uh, an earmark of $307,450 in reimbursement for last year's microburst. I believe the microburst was a year ago, last Thursday or Friday, so it's just about a year since uh, the microburst that we learned of that funding. Uh, so that, again, that seems like a long time coming, but uh, really due to the good work of our delegation staying on top of that and having it included in a supplemental budget, so I'm very happy about that. 
Uh, and finally, the board was provided with a memo on their desks tonight. We have five new police officers who graduated from the police academy on Friday, were sworn in officially today in the selectmen's hearing room, uh, and I had the opportunity to go uh, to the graduation on Friday, and I know Selectman Byrne was there, and he might want to talk about it a little bit as well. And it was uh, a real class act, and I was proud to have five of Arlington's newest officers graduating uh, from a class of 46. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Kira? Um, uh, thank you. I, I just, um, I think I just wanted to uh, thank an awful lot of our town departments and employees for their support and help with the um, Arlington Live, the, the Summer Arts Block Party. Um, you know, in particular, the uh, the DPW, the police and fire did a lot. Um, the fire department was great, helping us uh, to stage a lot of the um, uh, the supplies and materials and use, tap into the electricity. And they rolled out an engine, which was for the, the um, children who attended, which was really a huge, huge hit, um, really made a big difference. And I want to particularly thank... Um, you know, Mr. Chapdelaine and uh, Ms. Kropelka and our office staff who, who gave us a lot of help, and Ms. Ms. Rice also uh, advised us on various aspects of this. Um, and, and again, like I say, a number of our other departments, the, the um, building inspector and, and health department and such. It really was a great um, event. It was interesting to see Broadway Plaza used the way I think it was envisioned to be used with people congregating and, and using it. And I've um, since then talked to a lot of the merchants in the area, and they said it was just a huge um, shot in the arm for them. The summers are slow, and uh, they had just steady traffic coming through throughout the day. There were a lot of families with young kids, a lot of families with young, young kids came, came through um, that day. But uh, some of the businesses told me that they were even seeing an uptick later in the week, people who had kind of gone quickly into their shops maybe and then wanted to come back and, and explore more and you know, I think you know this was an initiative that was um, really kind of jointly spearheaded by uh, ATED and the Arlington Center for the Arts with also some serious involvement uh, from the Regent Theater as well and um, uh, I, I think as, a, as kind of an experiment and a pilot project to see what we could do with the creative economy to try to marry some of those aspects it, it really was um, um, a, a great day and a, and a great uh, experiment and um, uh, we, we learned a lot from it and I want to thank this this board for the support for some of the various measures that we had to take as well to uh, you know close the street and uh, and, and such it was um, it was great That's all I have. Um, yeah I'll be quick I just want to follow up with Adam's comment about the um, uh, police officer graduation that we attended on Friday, um, just like to recognize John Costa, Thomas Kelly, Jess Scarbo, uh, Bobby Smith, and Alex Stodick, who are our new firefighters, our new police officers. They own, um, and uh, what what a ceremony um, that they had in Old Faneuil Hall. Um, this particular class they um, were going through when the marathon bombings took place, so that I think they had a little different experience than um, you know some of the classes before them. Um, one, they all did the Run to Remember, which was a, a half marathon that was completed by the entire class, and they ran, ran in form, which was um, pretty cool to hear. And they also all graduated with a GPA over 90%, so that also makes you feel a little safer. Um, and a couple other tidbits. We did see um, uh, Officer Dick Donahue from the Transit Police um, gave, gave a pretty spectacular speech at the ceremony. And uh, one thing I was, I guess I should be surprised to hear, but um, just a other tidbit of information was Officer Sean Collier was, had the highest GPA out of anyone who's ever gone through the Transit Police Academy. And they have a new award named after him uh, starting this year. Um, but other than that, it was excellent, and um, we're lucky to have him. Good. Thank you. All right. Uh, I do have a couple items that won't be too long. Um, First off, I want to just sh thank the town manager and our delegation again for the work on my first funding. It's a big deal, and uh, I'm really appreciative of the work that got that done. Uh, received a letter, an email this week from a gentleman who parked his trailer for two nights in the town parking lot, who spent approximately 3,000 words singing the praises of Marie Kapoka. And so Marie converting school principals across the country, one by one, into fans of Arlington, Massachusetts, 
you gave him excellent service, and uh, he was really glad to receive it. And uh, my last item is about the ZBA. When we took the vote last month, I had originally planned on scheduling appointments tonight. And I confess that I got nervous when we didn't have a lot of appointees as we were getting, or excuse me, uh, applications as we were getting close to the deadline. And so I asked the office to extend the deadline and uh, re-advertise, which they did. We then proceeded to get enough applications that I think were in great shape. Um, we have had our first application that came in, so the clock, so to speak, has started ticking. Uh, the there needs to be a hearing. I'd have to double, don't. I have to double check my math to really be sure, but it's approximately September 19th that the hearing has to happen by. So I have every expectation that we'll be able to make appointments at our next meeting, which leaves sufficient time for them to schedule and act on a hearing um, before that does. So I just wanted to give the board an update on that since I you know, changed our schedule. Okay, thank you. That was my last item. Move yeah. to the drink. I think that's a good idea. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned.